It's time to celebrate July 4th with a premium foam mattress designed, assembled, and manufactured in the USA. Lisa has leveraged 30 plus years of experience and hundreds of hours of testing to design the perfect mattress. And Lisa's mission is to provide a better night's sleep for everybody. Through their 110 program, they'll donate one mattress for every 10 they sell. Hey, hurry, the Lisa July 4th mattress sale won't last long. Get $160 off a Lisa mattress at leesa.com slash bombcast today. One more time, that's leesa.com slash bombcast for $160 off. Lisa. Welcome to the Giant Bobcast, your one and only home for clones of Super Smash Brothers. That's ben, right. This ben, is the only place. Ben, what you got? Uh, there's a glorious icons, bounty this week. Combat Arena. Uh, wait, just what do we got in general? What do we got? There's only two this week, oh. but that's oh, okay. two more than there Most have weeks. been. There needs to be. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, you're right. Somehow five more than it needs to be. Somehow a, it's two more than two UPFs ago when we played a, <laughs> another one. Oh, that was Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Okay. Yeah, that's right, the next yeah. Smash. Okay. We were looking at indie fighters that uh, feature indie game characters. Mm, and yeah. We counted no less than three. Jeff came in here and somehow sh told me about a Smash-like fighting game that has the dude from VVVVVV in it, and I didn't know that it existed. Yeah. I feel like something so on-brand for me existed in the world, and I didn't know about it that my worldview is kind of just off. I wish, I wish there was an easier way to say the name of that game. It's too many syllables. Is his name Commander <laughs> Video? No, or, that's, no that's the guy the from guy. the Runner, which He's is also the in commander. this game. Yep. Commander Video yep. is in this game. And also in the, the Blade Strangers game. That's a 2D yeah, fighter. Yeah, another that's a real game. Fighting? Also at Shovel Knight. Also the guy. and Commander yeah. Video? Why yeah. don't we just call yeah. it V? Sure, we could do that. Yeah. Commander right. Video really gets around. No, this indie Pogo uh, game that just came out. I don't know. It's got... The whale character, the orcane from yeah. Rivals of Aether in it. It's got, okay. yeah, I don't know. Downwell. Downwell. Mr. Downwell. Like, it's a good list. And it sounds like that they went and really dedicated themselves to, like, really copying Smash because they also have a bunch of, like, trophy stuff oh, from really? other indie games oh, that oh, are not cool. playable characters. <laughs> that could be fun. It's just, like, weird. I don't know. It sounds, all right, let's check it out. Yeah, we'll take a look at it. I don't yeah. know. Let's go. A platform fighter? Yeah, sure. that's what, is that what they're called. Is that, yeah. is that what we yeah. call them? To yeah. discern them from uh, real, real fighters. Real fighters. <laughs> <laughs> traditional fighters real i was thinking a lot about the word platform fighter yesterday and how accurate and how it it, it, it is the it is a really good blend of yeah. platforming it's got platforming controls fighting. yep exactly and it's actual platform really center. it's one of those terms that i when i first heard it it made me scoff but the more i thought about it it's like it, it does it's yeah. those two things and it's necessary because there used to be mm -hmm. i mean you know, there there was a contingent of people who when 3D fighting games first came out, we're like, no, I like real fighting games. <laughs> uh, and that went away. This one I don't think ever will. Some people <laughs> even, like, I remember in my circles, refer, like, when people would bring up Mortal Kombat, they would say the same thing. Like, oh, oh sure. No, yeah, I like, yeah. I like real fighting games, yeah. not this Mortal Kombat. Yeah, no. Interesting. I had a friend who was like, Mortal Kombat, that's like checkers. I play chess. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Like, the uh, idea of a block button was so... Ah, yeah. come like, on, Many man. people were just ah. like... Scott, like ah. I don't there is nothing scoffing. more real than a turnaround jump kick. <laughs> totally. <yeah. laughs> nothing. But, you know, in, in Mortal Kombat 1, they didn't have I know, turnaround that's, jump that's kick. That's why so... MK2 is the best sequel ever made. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about 3 when the punches also turned around? Wait, did they, they... punches did that in 2? They had they? a little bit of hustle, too. Yeah. They ran. You, yo, you could do that torpedo in the air. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, you could Just change everything. Uh huh. Wow. I saw a Mortal Kombat two machine at an anime convention. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Was it a full cabinet? It was a full not cabinet. Not some weird conversion. No, it was not a conversion. It, it, was, it was a proper Raiden MK side two with side art, all okay. other stuff. Nice. It was, was, it, it was bizarre. Anybody playing? No. No. What? 
No, a lot of people were playing Pump It Up. Oh, sure. <laughs> dance Dance Revolution and whatnot. Mm. I'm thinking of buying some like marquee stuff at California Extreme this year. Nice. I think this is finally oh. the year that I get Wait. something stupid to put on my wall. Oh, just, yeah. okay. Just yeah, no, I don't have, like, yeah, 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 just for around the house type. Just, just, a, just put it in a frame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Frame, yeah. Some I mean, marquee yeah, you art. can. Yeah, you, know, yeah, you, totally. you probably should. Don't put pinholes through it. Like no. A, like right. a weirdo. Uh, well, what's, what are your marquees? What are your dream arcade marquees that you would want to own? <sighs> like, a, 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 number one, probably MVC2. Hmm. Uh, up there. So any, any fighting game up there is, is up there. Like, you know, any of the street fighters. Any fighting games. Like Time Killers. You're getting a Time Killer. If that's oh, the only... Actually, time actually yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's, if there's a Bloodstorm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Primal Rage. Any, any Tattoo sure. Assassins cabinets ever get manufactured? I don't know. Did they get that far? <laughs> I don't know. There's There must be art I, Like a that. prototype or yeah. something. Yeah. I mean, somewhere. they did prototypes, but maybe yeah. they didn't do a proper marquee at mm. that point. I don't know. That's why they failed. Yeah. yeah. You guys going to go to California Extreme? I don't know. Wait, I am, is it, it's mm. the 28th, 29th. Oh, okay. Not quite yeah. here yet. No. Yeah. I think, I brought, that thing really sneaks up. It yeah. does. I brought Griffin last year, and it was so packed. He did not have yeah. a great time. But uh, he, he got to play a few games. He, he, you know, he liked, liked that part. They got two full halls now. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. There's like a whole other area that's just full of like, it had the you know the big space in, the big new space invaders and yep. then like all oh, the old yeah. classics so cool. like just you know oh, here's a bunch of paper boys bringing and modern stuff now oh yeah yeah, yeah. Huh. they always kind of uh, were you yeah know, when, as much this, as there was there's just not stuff. that much modern yeah. stuff they would always definitely have the hot new pinball machine right okay. yeah um, were, I haven't been in like five years yeah. uh, maybe a little longer now so I don't know I I was definitely thinking about going this year but I'm also going on vacation right around that time mm. and so it's like I'm gonna be out of town around then so I'm not sure. Yeah, I kind of wanted more merch there. Like, I didn't find many places that were like selling. Yeah, stuff. I, like I bought a bunch presents. of T-shirts one year. Really? Uh, that were just like, here's the Zaxxon logo on a shirt. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, and food fight, like a food fight ringer tee. Ooh, nice. That's how long ago I bought that. Is that <laughs> someone still thought, well, well, these ringers were ringer tees. <laughs> Uh, the riggers were not in style, but oh. that's what they were selling. <laughs> the uh, most mad I've ever seen anyone get mad at an arcade video cabinet is Food Fight. And at my first California Extreme, there was a man screaming and slamming the side of it and playing it for... We did a full lap around, and he was still playing it when we came back. Still was, screaming. It, if I'm not... You can, like, go to a harder level, like, yeah, right yeah, off the bat. You, you can, there's a level so, yeah, select, yeah. He was going in on, like towards the end or I don't know if it was yeah. the last level or near the last level but yeah he was just fully red sweating cursing up a storm it was great and was, you're like these are my people yeah it was like you know 1am yeah. <laughs> remember, that, remember that time we had the opportunity to buy zaxxon.com we did didn't we <laughs> yeah yeah <Jesus>. yeah <laughs> it was not like super cheap no though. it was not an impulse purchase it was not purchase. frivolous like well we should definitely get zaxxon.com yeah. I uh, want to say it was maybe four Figures? Yeah, I yeah. I mean, right. This mm -hmm. site doesn't really have a history of buying URLs for just to buy them, you yeah. know. It's, right. So. Yeah. I forget uh, how we we just came into some list of domains that were expiring. Yeah. Or being squatted, or I forget how they were. Available. Shelby had a list. Yeah. He he got he got the just, list of the good domains. Here, here is here are hundreds of domains. Yeah, that it was like, hey, do you could be purchased? Yeah. Do you need any of these? <laughs> was asked to us, and, and I was like, I can't in good conscience <laughs> <laughs> tell you. So Zaxxon was definitely the one that stood out. But, to, to yeah. Me. Do you remember any of the other ones? No. <sighs> Most of them were not that great. There are a ton of great domains available, <laughs> especially when you get outside of .com. And no, the... that's all bullshit. Everything outside of .com, unless it's like part of the whole thing, unless you're like, you know, cool.bike. Right. You sell cool yes. bikes. Mm. But, you know, you can't just be like Ben's home.bike and it's just a website about me. You know, if I feel like well, then don't register dot .bike, register dot .pizza because it is all about pizza. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying blank.com is immortal. It's eternal, right? Yeah. You know, to own a dot .com is to own... That's real. A real... It's like owning a piece of the moon. Mm. <laughs> kind of. Okay. I just got junk cade. It's like a piece of the Berlin ago, Wall. Like a couple months ago. Yeah? Yeah, like arcade and junk. Yeah. I'd, yeah. Good. I'd, Somebody junk would love that someday. Yeah. I'd, I'd settle for a dot .net or a dot .org. No. Uh, but no? No, once you get out of dot .com, I want to go all the way yeah. into... Uh, like, dot .dad. What happened yeah. to dot, dot .net is like nowhere these days. No, no. one's, no one's just dot .net. But everybody's on a network. Yeah, well, that's why they don't it need plays. it. It's redundant. You know, mm -hmm. I, if you're going to do that, then what, you might as well just get .xxx because we know what you're using <laughs> your website for. There was a network activity. Yeah, there's a very very popular uh, netrunner 
website that ended in .net, but it was a pun because of net damage. You know, cyberpunk. It's a cyberpunk thing. Mm. Um, but other than that, I think you're Is right. Like, think the, like the t-shirt? It's a cyberpunk thing you wouldn't, you wouldn't understand. understand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I know I've complained about it a few months ago, but all of the short single syllable domains are just impossible to get yep. at this point. Yeah. Sure. That's what, Everything if, has been... If you start stepping out of uh, the the big three... Oh, I mean even uh, the newer... Like dot pro, yeah. Dot zone, yeah. Like those those nice short pithy ones. There's some good dot just, zones. Those things got bought up. I feel like I, I posted a list of. Uh, you know, I'll say this out loud because I need someone to register it to prevent me from registering it. But last time I looked, McDonald's dot lol was available. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. And I've almost registered it like five or six times, oh, and I just go like, "No, I, oh, there's I nothing I would do with this." I didn't know there was an LOL. Yeah, that's pretty good. There's a yeah. fucking ton of them. Really? Huh. And Mc- I'm just trying to think about McDonald's LOL. Is that like a website devoted to the play places? Like, you know, I was it- just gonna register it as a Mastodon instance. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to think like, what's the funniest thing that McDonald's has to offer? It's... Uh, Ronald McDonald is a clown. Uh, That's true. Uh, it doesn't get no funnier than clowns. Birdie's funnier than Ronald McDonald. You take that back. Like Birdie's her... like a fun. She's got goggles on her head. No, she nice. likes to party. She's. A ch- I, I think I think the Hamburglar is Hamburglar's pretty good. got some. Jokes. Hamburgers are criminal. But I know. Crime <laughs> isn't funny, Brad. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> He's stealing. Their number one export. He's undermining the entire company, and still they hang around with him. It's Ham- like, Hamburglar. Oh, so, so what I hear is that you're uh, you're in the pocket of Big Bird. Yeah, ha- you're Hamburglar. interested in McDonald's corporate interests. We um, don't have laws, and none of this makes sense. Hamburglar is a hero even, of the people. That's right. <laughs> why do you we even have a mayor at this point if we're just going to let anarchy run in Hamburger He steals town. hamburgers from the rich and gives them to the poor. No, he gives it to himself, and he eats them. He's very poor. He needs those hamburgers more He's than you do. He's poor in hamburgers. <laughs> There's a program he can apply to and get a federally mandated supply of, of you know fruit, vegetables, low quality carbs. beef. Yeah, register with them. <laughs> they will keep you okay. Mayor McCheese. They will decide when you can eat. Look, that his, Mayor McCheese's dark past is behind him. He has owned up to those allegations. He has come through. He is on the straight and narrow. Look, he's going to turn this all around. Just he kept me. the fry guys in a cage. You're telling me you wouldn't? Wait, who are the fry guys again? Maybe I would. <laughs> hmm. Look, we all sometimes have to do things we're not proud of for the greater good. That's right. I see that now. Like, you, want, you want to make a hamburger, you got to break a few eggs. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, no, totally. That's, that's, how that's it, the fat burger slogan. That's how it goes. We'll yes. put an egg on your hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. I recommend it. Uh, do you recommend any video games? Oh, what do you, li- what no. do you like? Gosh, I got, got? A, I got a, I got rec- I got a recommendation. Yeah, mm-hmm. what's uh, good? Surprise! Is I'm talking about another fighting game, everyone. What? I'm okay with this. Whoa, it's a change of pace this week. Here we go, though. For real, this is probably a lot of really good fighting games have come out over the last two years. This is the w- not. This is the one I would recommend to anyone at any level of interest of fighting games from like casual interest and i've never been good at them to i really really like them is pocket fighters oh yeah yeah we played that on ups yeah pocket like, rumble? that game's pocket cool. rumble thank oh, pocket, you pocket rumble <laughs> pocket <laughs> fighter also a good game yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, i would not recommend it to most people no right. uh but pocket rumble uh it's been out on pc in for a little while yeah uh like last year late last year yeah. I think. yeah still in like an early access kind of form i guess yeah, yeah. but and it's out on switch now mm-hmm. uh 10 bucks and it is basically in the style of those old Neo Geo pocket, uh, pocket color. Yeah. Yeah. Pocket color fighting games. Um, Super deformed characters, big heads and stuff. Yeah. You'd see. But yeah. Also cool. It looks like something you would see running on like a Game Boy Advance or something. Totally. Yeah, totally. They all have like a color associated yeah. with them. And very, you know, yeah, very blocky. Yes. Pixely, low, low color palette type yeah. stuff. Yeah. Very easy to pick up and play. There's no special inputs. There's no Dragon Ball or Dragon Punch motions. There's no quarter circles. It's to do all your special moves. You either hold a down back and down forward and press and hold. Also, there's only two attack buttons. Two buttons, right? Yeah, yeah, light and heavy. Yeah, super simple to get into. Yep. Um, all the characters play pretty differently. Um, they all have a really cool gimmick. Uh, I've been spending, yeah. I don't know, I, I've been playing a little bit every day just to kind of really get in depth with the characters, and I'm finding a lot of really cool just like interactions and, and, and combo potential it's really cool every hit does one damage so it's just like one of those things where you have direct feedback on everything you are doing so does that, simplified yeah uh 
what can I? I'm trying to think how to how to break this down mechanically. Does that does that bias things toward faster attacks? Because if if every attack does the same amount of damage, then slower attacks. Like normally, you have the trade off mm -hmm. of like like the heavy punch and kick do more damage, so yeah. that's why they, they get away with taking longer. Well, yeah. typically those moves uh, in this game will have like longer ranges mm. or you know better hitboxes and stuff like that. Also, um, I guess with only two buttons, you don't really have the concept of light and heavy attacks. Doesn't, yeah. doesn't exist as much. And you know, at most combos are like four or five hit combos, so it's not you know huge, these huge technical strings or anything. Um, it's got a lot of really good solo content. It's got a training mode. You can turn hitboxes on and mm -hmm. just like look at that stuff. Uh, it's got a fake career mode where it's basically like you're playing against fake online opponents that have names like Day One Tenchu or you know, oh cool, I, yeah. I never DP yeah. and they just spam DP and stuff like that. <laughs> and then as you beat them, you start to come across like more advanced AI. Yeah, uh, and everybody's got like a certain amount of like battle points or whatever. Yeah. That's cool. I always liked it when like Virtua Fighter that. did stuff like that yeah. of just like go to this arcade and play the people at this arcade, and it's all different names and AI and customized characters and stuff. It's neat. The AI can be fucking brutal in this game, though. It feel it feels the closest to fighting a good fighting game player of any fighting game I've played. Okay. Um, to a fault, like almost with the arcade mode, I can't get past the first. I can't get past the first guy in arcade mode. Uh, yeah, the AI can be brutal, huh. <laughs> but uh, the the career mode is, is different. It definitely starts at a way lower uh, difficulty. Um, it's got GGPO for the net code. Yep, and I hear yeah, really good reports on that as well. Yeah, so, so far I've had very few problems. Easy to get matches. Uh, fairly pretty, easy. Pretty yeah, quick. there used to be a lot of people playing. Yeah, yeah. it's only ten bucks. Yeah, yeah, and ten dollars for for all of this is like a steal. I think. Um, it, it's. It's cool, too, because on the Switch, it's one of the few games where I've popped off the two Joy-Cons, set it down with the little kickstand out, and just played with a person next to me, and we both had a <laughs> Fulfilling good time. the dream. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. <laughs> Fulfilling like, Nintendo's vision. We're going to bring it to Evo. Some money matches. Yeah, I'm just going to walk up to people and say, money match me right now. In Pocket Rumble. Just Let's go. Pull my okay. Switch out. Yeah. Just um, roam like a like a wandering samurai. Just, yeah, just roam the oh, streets. I should get a cool samurai hat and or poncho. Challenge people to honorific duels. So what I didn't like about this game initially is, uh, you know, it's only got two buttons, but you know, you've got normal attacks, and that's uh, just a, like a tap of the button. Uh, it's super sensitive, and I found myself like holding it a little too long, so specials would would come out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, but I, there is a way to configure uh, to make it like a four button, so you can have like the top set of buttons just be your lights, just your normals, and then the bottom set be okay your, your specials. And yeah, that the, made the world a difference to me. When I was playing the the girl with the cat, yeah, like all of her special moves involve a cat, but you can also make the cat explode for <laughs> big damage, but then you lose the cat for the rest of the match. Like I kept accidentally triggering the, the exploding cat, sure. And, and losing it, yeah. Which was, yeah, yeah. Once I got past that, man, yeah, the game's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was cool. I'm pleasantly surprised by it, you know, especially. And you know, I played it early on um, with the PC version. There were only a couple characters available, and I, I think I kind of wrote it off as just like, oh, I see their trick here. They're, they're, they're going for a Neo Geo Pocket Color look. That's, yeah, and that's I, about I think it, I, I played a little bit of it. I think when it came out of early access last year on PC, and was like, oh, this seems neat, yeah. but never played it against anyone. So mm -hmm. I was like, ah, oh, this seems cool, and no one's playing it online. Oh well. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, the amount of depth and the type of depth that they've put in signifies that you know they're taking this seriously. Like it's a, it's a legit fighting game. Like I, I to like the it point a lot. where like that's the thing I, I might say. You, you talk about anyone with any level of interest in a fighting game can enjoy it, but at the same time, like every character is wildly different with how their meter works and all this <laughs> stuff. That like true, having some exposure to the Guilty Gears of the world and some of these other games that are you know, like, hey, we got wild meter shit. And different this and that and you hey can, this, we got a bullet counter also yeah work you know, your way into like those a, characters yeah you'd have to kind of there, there's there's always the, going to be a Shoto. basically you know? right the, yeah, like yeah. the first two characters are very much just sort of this game's Ryu and Ken totally kind of, yeah, to, yeah kind of, yeah. like to a degree I think I think the first character I picked is you were like you were like all right this guy every special move he does takes a bar of his health off oh, yeah. but it also gives you a bar of meter and then you can cash that meter in to get health back and it was just like whoa it was a lot yeah, yeah. which is it's it's a really it's cool, cool it's a cool idea mechanic especially yeah. having a game that like it looks so deceptively simple yeah. yep uh, but like every character real depth has a uh, a uniqueness of that yeah. style to them they're yeah. all they're all very different it's neat yeah, it, it's very cool. Um, I've I've been having a hell of a time with it, and as far as something you can just pick up and play a few rounds of on the Switch, I, I definitely recommend it. I can't speak to the current state of the PC port. I don't know if it's out. Uh, it's out. Last time I checked, okay. no. uh, it was like at a point four version, so not a not a one point oh. I think so it, that might when, be when when was that? Because I think that I'd... was Friday. Oh really? I okay. On that. Huh. Huh. Um, but yeah, so if you don't have a Switch, you know, maybe check it out there. But still, really fun. I've been playing a lot of Switch 
uh, between that and the Octopath mm. Traveler demo. Out of that three hour um, demo. Yeah, that that game surprised me. I, I, I really like, is, is anyone else here playing that? No. Oh, check that out. No, I'm afraid Negative. of timed demos because yeah. I don't want to like start it, have to move away because it's like, are they still counting the time yeah, as I'm away from the game? Kind of. I, that seems like a weird way to start a game because you're not going to feel like you can take your time necessarily. Yeah, like, I, I was like, talking with Jason where I was conflicted because on one hand, I want to kind of skip through the story stuff because that's eating into my time. Right. But also it's going to carry that save data into the real game. So I can't you miss need to know that the stuff. background. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, and and it's a JRPG, which are notoriously slow to get started and really get you into things. But I've just been checking out different. So it, it has eight, I think, characters you can choose from. Um, what's oh, a, yeah, what's the, the battle octo, system like? The octopath. The battle system is really cool. It's kind of an evolution of the persona style, where enemies will have weaknesses, mm -hmm. and if you hit them with their weakness, they will go down. Um, but as you battle, you're storing up uh, points. You can store up to three like special points. I forget what they call them. Um, Ex stocks. And then you can cash in up to three of those in a turn. And to do like multi hits, so you basically down a guy, and then on the third, like on the second turn, you down a guy. First turn you hit him, second turn down him, third turn you cash in your stocks. Mm -hmm. You hit him with like a really really big attack. While they're down, they take extra damage. Okay. Um, you know, turn based. It's it's it is a turn based RPG, but the different characters all kind of have different ways of fighting. Like I was playing the hunter who can switch between weapons. There's characters who have summons. Is it more active time battle where it's, you know, kind of back no, and forth? No, it is. It's like it is turn it's my turn. There's a little chart on the top. But when you knock enemies down, they fall out of the rotation. So okay. you can kind of see, see who's who to target by who's coming up. Okay. Um, and I just really love the look of it. Yeah. Uh, That's cool. I almost wish they had fully committed to that kind of paper craft art style on the character front. I almost wish that. I, uh, there's something about the, like, 8-bit pixel art characters that look a little off in these settings to me. I think they look fine, like in a vacuum, but I almost wish they fully committed to this weird, like almost mm. paper Mario -y, uh aesthetic. Like shoebox diorama looking thing. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I, I think this game, I, I've definitely gone from having zero interest to wanting to check out the full uh, story. Oh, and the last, the last really cool thing about it is every character has a unique action that they can do. Um, and kind of the implication is soon, or as you play, you'll get these characters all in mm. your party. But like, so the knights, or the hunter's thing is she can provoke any townsperson. What that means is you can summon a monster and fight a townsperson. And if you beat them, you knock them out. So let's say there's a dude standing in front of his house saying, uh, you can't come in my house. You fight him, you beat him. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk you to walk dragon. In. Exactly. You walk in, you steal their, his treasure. Gotcha. Or there's like characters who one of the like characters the is a merchant right. and she can buy something from anyone. Um, the first RPG, JRPG, to identify how weird it is that you just wander into people's houses and take their stuff all the time. Yeah, it's like, dude, come on. What the fuck are you doing? No, my, check this out. This is my life savings. I keep it in this ornate yeah, the tr treasure, the treasure chest. treasure chest was next to my bed for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's out this Friday, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. Uh, although, conversely... If 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 this group of four people are the only people capable of saving the world, shouldn't everybody just give them everything all the time? Yeah, like that always weirded me out about them. how like merchants, like, hey, I'm going to kill the guy that is enslaving the entire world. You Likely could just story. you could just give me this sword. Yeah, I bet that's not the first time somebody's come to that merchant and said, I am going on a quest and I need <laughs> six eye of your best swords. That's fair. It's like the equivalent of just like, what if someone was walking around saying, I built a submarine to get the kids out of the tube. You need to give me everything you got. You would look at him and go, dude, fuck off. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> but it's made of rocket parts. Like, no, we're good. Thanks for your help. We're good, dude. I'll just leave it here in case you okay. need it. Okay, yeah, uh, thanks. It's Thank got you. my number written Thank on you. it. Thank you. Do you want a cool, Thank ca you. Do you want a cool car? No. You wrote about a roller coaster and ice cream. Yes. All right. <laughs> Jeff, you've been playing anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> sounds fun. Uh so I I played a lot of Defiance twenty fifty over the weekend. Okay. Uh which is officially out today. It's a new game, right? No. <laughs> But it just came it's just coming out. It's out today. It just came out. It just came out. It's brand new. So it is 
a remaster of the original Defiance, which came out in 2013. Yeah, uh, they've been yeah, it was upfront a, about that. Yes, Be- yeah, uh, okay. they, they've been they've right. been fairly upfront about it's a TV it. TV show. Uh, yes, it was. It, so yeah. Defiance came out. It was a 360 and PS3 and PC. Uh, you bought the box, and then they sold DLC add-ons and stuff along the way. But originally, yeah, it was. It was released in conjunction with a TV show. I think it was, I want to say it was on sci-fi. Probably, yeah. yeah. yeah it was. Like, with all the other good television. Um, and they put quests in the game that corresponded to the episodes mm-hmm. of the TV show. So you would kind of, uh, you would interact with characters from the show. Play along with the show. Yeah, basically. It's like a modern day Captain Power, Power or yeah, something. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> just uh, shooting, just point shooting the, at your TV. You'd point at the flashing light, pull the trigger, and you get points. Uh <laughs> And it wasn't bad. It's a, it's a, it was an yeah. MMO shooter, you know, third person shooter type thing. For for what it was, it was okay. I, according to Steam, I played about fifteen hours of it uh, originally. Um, I forgot about it. I was like, oh, this just seems okay. Never, n- not really gonna have a need to play it much again. It's it's kind of, you know, it's, it's it's got some issues. It's it, you know, at the time uh, it when ran it came out, I remember, yeah. It, well, it, but it's still up. You can still play well, yeah. the original Defiance. <laughs> but I mean, in in our hearts, uh, yes, oh, in, came, in my heart, it, came it was done. Uh, Defiance twenty fifty is out now. It's the same game. <laughs> okay. I mean, <laughs> it's the same voiceover. It looks the same. It's the same environments. It is hmm. uh, all the same quests, but without. So the... does it have all the stuff that they added? No, like all the... but so so it's like. It, you know, when I log into Original Defiance, which I did at a, to just like try to compare, it's got shit all over the map. And it's like season four, episode one, season two, this, which I don't think corresponds to the TV show. I think the TV show got canceled. Surely. Yeah, I think it's so. been um, a while. It's on the sci fi network. But they, you know, well, yeah, sure. It's same deal. Uh, and so they've added a bunch of content to it. Uh, and they, I believe they sold DLC, like add on content packs for it. Um, and so none of that's there. So it seems like they really just kind of pushed the reset button on the game. Also, you know, so characters don't come over. Uh, it's a whole separate thing. Uh, and, and they've rolled back the content to what I remember from launch years and years ago, roughly. Um, but it says 2050 on it, but it says 2050 on it. And it's, uh, it's a 64 bit app now. (laughs) Okay. Oh, that's uh, that's what I was waiting for. And so the the actual changes are really seem to be around business. Like it's a free to play game now, mm-hmm. um, and they're not gonna. It sounds like they're not gonna sell content. They're you know gonna and they sold a lot of the stuff through, through original Defiance as the years wore on. In terms of like, hey, do you want to buy ten more inventory slots or more character slots or more room for the keys you need to open some of the chests in game? And I think you have to buy. You pretty much you can buy the keys. I don't yeah. know if it's the only way to get the keys, but. Uh, so they they did a lot of that stuff over the years, cosmetics as well, uh, and so this one just seems it seems like they're pushing the reset button on a lot of that stuff and around the business model too. They've moved to uh, a more defined class based system. You can change class at any time, but you're still kind of leveling up each class individually. Okay. And there's a skill tree for each class as opposed to before. It was almost like um, uh, it was it was like uh, a a kind of larger tree of you pick what you want and then load your perks out and all this other stuff and you kind of pick what like what you want. Now it's more like Hey, the demolitionist is going to have this and this, and also conveniently that lets them sell classes, which they are doing. Uh, you can unlock them with a grind currency as well, I guess eventually. But mm. uh, but you know the the early Head Start access was based upon you buying twenty dollar packs of classes and, and currencies and stuff like that. None of that is like seems like super egregious. It's just really like I downloaded it, going like I remember liking Defiance. Let's check it out. And seeing that they said it was a remaster, so I was like, oh, you know, I guess it'll be a retelling of whatever this story was. Yeah, like some character tweaks, you know, yeah. some mission structure stuff. And then logging in and going like, wait, this doesn't... And then going back to the other game and going like, oh, like, the login screen is identical. All of the... Holy all shit. All of the huh. in-game menus are identical. All the navigation around the menus is identical. Uh, and And just realizing like, oh, no, this is literally that game. Wow. Just kind of tweaked to have like maybe a slightly large longer draw distance yeah. maybe it looks a little bit better i was gonna ask like how much better it actually not looks. dramatically yeah. at least uh, it's free and yeah at least yeah, you're not so, gonna buy it thinking it's a full sequel yeah yeah as, as, of, really as, of, as of today it is it is free yeah. uh it is out there for everybody it's so strange yeah uh it's 
curious that they've been up front with it being a remaster. Yeah. And, you know, they're calling it something completely different. And it seems like just, you know, it's, it's, I bet in some ways this lets them push reset in a way that lets them grow the game more intelligently this time around. Yeah. Perhaps. Whereas they kind of got hamstrung by some of the business stuff the first time. Or maybe, maybe they made some poor decisions along the way with how they decided to sell content. And so this is more like, hey, instead of selling content, we're just going to really double down on buy a cool hat. Yeah. Um, which probably is a smarter way to go, assuming that's the way they go. That seems to be what the the word is. Also, buggy. Yeah. For a game that's identical to a game that's been out for years, <laughs> it is weirdly laggy and and you know whatever. In the early access for the the head start phase, maybe you know they just didn't have enough of the servers turned on, so maybe it'll be fine once the initial launch hype dies down oh, or something. Sure. But like. The first day I started playing it, the, you get on ATVs and stuff. You can summon yep. an ATV anywhere you go. And the first day, it was great. I wish it was. I wish it stayed this way. Every time I walked up to get on the ATV, my character would disappear. So it was just ghost ATV driving around the landscape. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what the game is. I mean, it's it's the same. It's a shooter. It's a third person shooter, uh, and it has a lot of generic side content with like a lot of generic VO of just like I need some help, but I the government can't do it, so you need to do it. And you go out there and do it, and they're like, man, you're a real kick-ass guy at the thing you did that I'm not going to say specifically because that would cost money to voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, yeah, there's still, there's something to it, but at the same time, it now feels like an even more of a relic out of time in some ways because it feels like the bar has been raised on what a free-to-play action shooter. I mean, you know, you look at something like Warframe, which you know is not perfect or by any means, but you know you you look at some of the other games out there doing free to play shooter type stuff, mm-hmm. and you look at this and you're like, man, like maybe this gets somewhere different this time out. But it's just kind of bizarre. That said, I put another fifteen hours into it. <laughs> okay, I don't okay. know. Did you get back to where you yeah. were before? I got past it. I think so, I don't remember. Um, it, I mean, is it? I assume it is very much loot based. Yep, like that's the totally. Point. Yeah, you're getting loot. You're getting uh, attachments for your guns. You're spending a currency to unlock the mod slots on an individual gun uh, to attach those mods and all that other stuff. Like every step of the way, there's a way around it. With like, hey, what if you just bought more of this type of salvage, and then what you if? could level up your gun this way, and you could do this, and yeah, uh, I don't know. It, it's there's it's not bad. Defiance is not bad. It never was. Uh, but I don't, I don't know. It's it's just like it seems like that market is even more crowded now than it was then. And so I just wonder, looking at it, like who's gonna who's gonna get into this thing? Because now it looks five years old too. Like even if it looks slightly better, it still doesn't look twenty eighteen fresh or anything like that. Not even twenty sixteen fresh. Like to be fair, my exposure to this is like seeing subject lines of press releases yeah. in my inbox and not digging too much deeper than that. But right. like just based on that, I thought this was a fully new game. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's like putting a date on the end of it. And it was like, oh, time has passed. No, this, this is a this, new that's thing. The, that's the time that I think the original game was set in as well. So. Yeah, like Brad, you you forwarded me a code for something they called the Founders Pass, which I think is a very strange thing to call it considering that this game came out five years ago yeah, it's found it already it's 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 a really bizarre thing uh but it's not bad like i you yeah, know yeah. For, for what it is it, it's it's certainly not a not a bad game i think some of the business stuff around it might get a little gross uh but i haven't gotten far enough in to start grinding up faction rep and all the other stuff that uh that you can bypass uh there or some of it you can you can certainly bypass by buying what faction traits. are you gonna? I, I don't think you select. I oh. think it's more that like as you do, you grind out missions for a faction. The the meter gets more full, and then you can buy stuff from that faction and spend your faction points or, or whatever. Uh, I don't really know. The thing I do like about it is that it's set here. It's set in the Bay Area. Oh, so it's like there's there was one mission that was like get out to Larkspur Landing oh. and well. do this, and like the game opens in like an area just called Mount Tam, huh. and then <laughs> next to that is Madeira. Oh mm. damn, you can go to where I was born. You're pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Blow it up. Uh, hey, and but it's all terraformed and fucked up. So you're not. It's not oh. like it's not accurate. The Golden Gate Bridge is in it. And San Francisco's is in it like so? It is accurate. Vines. Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably. I don't remember. <laughs> I haven't been there yet in the new game, but uh, but also that's kind of the whole game. I remember first time around going like, "Oh, this seems like a a good zone 
this seems like one cool zone. I wonder what the next zone is. And it turns out, no, the end game is in San Francisco and Silicon Valley. And that's kind of... It's always weird to me when like post-apocalypse or future stuff has the Golden Gate Bridge in it and it's the same color, which because like they paint that thing twice a week. I I think they paint half of it every other day or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a, there's a crew up there just real early. My in the friend is one of those guys. Really? Yeah. Why so often? Uh, to keep it golden. Yeah, Maybe. but there's a it's really shining beacon of the West Coast that fast. Yeah, I mean seawater is pretty. Yeah, guess, uh, yeah. yeah okay. But uh, yeah, you know, it's like who's taking care of the well, Golden maybe, Gate Bridge after the apocalypse? Maybe in yeah. the very near future, they figured out a way to just like get a super paint. Yes, yeah, super, it, super yeah. paint. Uh, if you go to the faction vendor, you can buy super paint for your ATV. You can actually paint it green if you want. If you, it's up to you. The future is now. I would love that. If that was just like a hey, if you want to spend money to change the color of the Golden Gate Bridge, we'll let you. <laughs> Fuck it. It's called Golden Gate. Why is it red? It's a great question. Oh. It's never been golden. Why don't they make the whole bridge out of the black box? Yeah. Mm. Anyway, I don't know. I played a bunch of that. I will probably continue to fuck <laughs> around with it. Nice. Uh, it, it, it feels okay. And, and and the shooting is more client side and the shooting feels all right. Um, <laughs> ringing endorsement. Ringing the endorsement. The shooting feels no, all like right. I, I'm, yeah, like I'm not going to recommend it to people. All I'm going to say is I don't think it's bad and I will probably fuck around with it some more. Like if you really, if for some reason you really want to play this game, feel free. Yeah, you can. <laughs> I allow it, uh, and it's out on current consoles now as well. I haven't seen those. Oh, versions. I didn't know that. Okay, yeah, I thought yeah. it was just PC. No, so the, the All right. so that's a new thing. Is like now it'll be on PS4 and yeah. Xbox One, and some stuff transfers over, but not anything. Huh. It's all like if you bought su- certain cosmetics and certain forms of inventory expansion or character slots, some of that stuff from Original Defiance will come over. God, what did I buy five years ago? Right, no yeah. idea. I don't know. I didn't play it that much. Yeah, it's. It's out there. It's not bad. All right. Yep. That's that's the best thing I can say about it. it it's also really strange that it exists at all. Totally. Yeah. It, as opposed to putting in work on the original game and saying, hey, we've, you know, overhauled this graphically, you know, but but then that comes with all the mistakes and all the, the, the decisions they made about how to monetize that made sense in 2013 that probably don't make sense now. So I guess breaking it into a separate game maybe makes sense in that way. It's just strange because that original game still exists yeah. and you can kind of decide which way you want to, but maybe they'll eventually shut the other one down. I have no idea. I don't have, I don't know. I have no idea. That it's other fucking one is weird. 64 bit. Uh, yeah. We'll I do mean, a video with it because it's fucking weird. We'll record something with it, even though you can go back and watch a quick look of original. <laughs> That'll be a fun <laughs> thing. Go back and watch the original quick look of defiance. And then we'll record something with this new one and see if you can tell the difference. <laughs> nice. Uh, you know, if you, if you sync up both of those quick looks at the same time. Whoa. So you can hear somebody talking about Satan. <laughs> that's most quick looks, honestly. That's, that's fair. Yeah. It's just me and the controller. I'm Pra- sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Praising the Dark Lord. That's just all Jan knows how to do. That's fair. Hey, Jeff. Can you tell me about your anime experience? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You went to that anime thing. Yeah. I went to that anime thing. I want to hear about this. Yeah. So uh, Crunchyroll got in touch and said, hey, you guys want to come be on a panel at our thing and we're like yeah okay sure i guess that'd be yeah yes of course that's weird but okay uh so yeah so that was that was fun so uh, yeah i flew down thursday uh to go to anime expo which is uh at the los angeles convention oh you mean ax yes ax Mm -hmm. uh which is at the home of e3 uh, so I went back to that convention center. Yeah, like people were posting photos from there with all the Anime Expo yeah. signage and stuff, and yeah. I was just like, this is, "What is this fucking imposter <laughs> doing in there?" It's <laughs> crazy, it's weird. It is universe. insane. Uh, so I got in, and we had a little bit of time to eat. So I met up with Dan, who had flown in the night before, and we tried to go to like the pantry, which is right, you know, pretty yeah. close to the convention center. Like, I want to get some breakfast because I've been up since ass o'clock uh, <laughs> to get down here, and I would love to eat food. Uh, it was just, there was a line out the door of people like dressed up as maids. <laughs> and so I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to walk up the street a little further to the Denny's. Mm-hmm. And there was a, a huge crowd of people there. Some of them dressed more up. More maids? As a few, yes. What, at least one more maid. I think this maid had a big sword. Uh, Melty blood. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so then I, Dan and I walked around the corner to that IHOP where you had the disgusting food. Mm, the literal worst hamburger I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Um, 
and they they had tables available, <laughs> so uh, we ate there and then went over. Uh, we did you get the steak? Nope, did not. Good I got call. pancakes because that's call. what the fuck they make there. Yeah, uh, that's their core competency. Yeah, uh, and anyway, so we we stole a couple of badges from some Crunchyroll folks for an hour and got to run over into the convention center. And that's where it just got weird because it's, you know, it's a convention center that like I've got clocked. Like I know how to get from place to place. I know where Nintendo is. I know like, okay, over here's where the Sega and all this other shit's going to be. Uh, and so Thinking about see, heading back to the war room. And to right, draw- yeah. Yeah. And, and it's like, oh, here's walk on, walk in this way. This is where we get in. Yeah. And then walking that way and being like, oh, they've got it all roped off. What the fuck? Uh, so that, like they, it was a huge snaking line of people trying to get into the West Hall, uh, and um, I, I had to I kind of th- I had to I stop and think. So like, okay, if we can't get in this way without waiting this huge line, we have badges that say exhibitor on them. We're supposed to be. I, in there. I know yeah. there's going to be a way for exhibitors to get in that don't involve waiting in this line. And so I had to like sit there and think like, okay, if I were planning a convention <laughs> and this was not the way in what would I do? And I was like, oh, there's a smaller door over in. Sure enough. Sure enough. Went over there and they're like, you guys exhibitors? I'm like, yes, definitely. We are absolutely exhibitors <laughs> named Jennifer. Please let us in. <sighs> and um, so we, we got in and we got into it. The first area we walked into was actually the gaming area, which was weird because the first thing we saw was a Blizzard booth. Blizzard, who doesn't Blizzard. go to E3, oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. had a booth at Anime Expo. And barely makes any anime adjacent products. Overwatch is the like, most anime. Yeah, but even, even that is a little bit of a stretch. How did they yeah. present stuff? What were they showcasing? I think they were just selling merch. Really? They've got, yeah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. I know they've got like a line of hats. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Shirts yeah. probably, you know. Yeah, I think they might have just been selling stickers. merchandise. We, we didn't get too close to their booth. Um, There was like some pachinko machines there. There's a whole huge tabletop cool. gaming area. So like people oh, playing wow. Magic and Star Wars and whatever the fuck else. I'm going to go to an anime con and play Magic. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> and then... Uh, there was a, a section that just said e gaming, and I was like, I love e games. Mm-hmm. So we went around there, and there were some people playing Smash. Uh, there was like a Shovel did. Knight. I don't remember if I talked about this on UPF or not, but a little bit, a little bit. But yeah, then like just straight up three three PCs running Dirt Four. <laughs> what? What the fucking fu- the most anime of racing games? Dirt Four was that like tied to the publisher or anything? No, just, I don't. Just like, I don't know why okay. that stuff was there. I don't know who brought <laughs> it, but there was just a row of PCs uh-huh. and TVs. So like on the TVs, they had Wii U's running Smash Brothers, and yeah. there were people playing that. And then Shovel yeah. Knight, and there was like one kiosk of Final Fantasy fifteen. And then like a Left for Dead two, weird row. Like I've I've been to anime cons and it'll be like okay here's a ro- here's like three rows of PCs. This row has League. This row has yeah. Overwatch. This row has Dota or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. like you know modern PCs. Instead, it was like one mach- one PC running Dragon Ball Fighters, and then yeah, like three Dirt machines four. running Dirt Fucking Four. And I was like, all right, I'm home. <laughs> weird. Uh, the it cons was, I've been to before, like they they would have gaming rooms set up, like with PCs yeah. and stuff, but it wasn't like anything. Well, I mean, they they did have you know a few setups with like Naruto and whatnot, but a lot yeah, of it was yeah. like Dojin stuff, like you know, fan made mm-hmm. like anime games. That stuff might have oh. been somewhere else. Like okay. we had an hour, so we kind of had to run uh, through. So uh, we went through that hall. What was going to happen to you if you didn't get out of there in an hour? Uh, well, we had our panel to do, oh, well, and well, also well, right the, the people the whose badges we had needed their badges back. Okay. So you got to limit yourself to an being, hour at a time. Just being when you're first, yeah. Uh, so, being introduced to anime. You know if the anime cops are going to come track you down, oh, I'm sure that they're on the fucking case for sure. Um, and anyway, so so that area also had that was where I saw the Mortal Kombat two machine and a bunch of arcade machines, but none of them were set to free play, which wow. was a very bizarre thing. It was like an arcade had bought a booth there (laughs) and just moved in machines and said, we're going to make some money. And yeah, there was a bunch of people playing DDR and paying for it. So, all right. Uh, We saw a row of uh, backdrops that were set up. It was just like, here's a a high school gym with bleachers and a scoreboard that you can kind of, you know, like, hey, you wore your cosplay shit. Come stand in front of this war-torn landscape. Yeah, yeah. Uh, And and so there's like eight different ones of those. Uh, Dan and I took photos on a bedroom scene that was the only one that didn't have a line for it. You can find those on my Twitter account, I believe, is where I put those. I did see it. Quality see photos. There. Quality photos. Uh, the the woman who was manning that particular station did a bang-up job of taking photos of Dan and I. Cool. 
Uh, and then we made our way over to the other hall thinking, because we were looking at it going like, there's no anime here. Like, it's just, there were some video games. Like, yeah. what the fuck? Well, I guess maybe the other hall, that's going to be where all the anime is at. And so we went over there walking past a bathroom that's, you know, walking past it that was emitting a stench that I have never smelled in 20 plus years of E3. Yeah. Can you? Or PAX. Yeah. Wow. Or PAX. This is going to be meaningless for people who don't go to the LACC a lot, but which bathroom are we talking uh, about? Which it, area? It was like turn turn right out of the West Hall uh, entrance and kind of we're heading out to where the food trucks are okay. between the halls. Yeah. yeah. Walking down past that way, that Galaxy Cafe is right okay. there. Kind yes. of walking past There's that. some bathrooms like on the, bathroom, right? on the bathroom yeah. on the right. Yes. That bathroom okay. on the right okay. yeah. was like a fucking shit bomb went off. You're in the walkway. And we're in the walkway. You're not in, we're not wow. in the bathroom. We're not even wow. close to the bathroom. Wow. Uh, I had a, I had a, you were exactly wondering where the experience. anime was. Yeah, it was in there. We didn't go in there. Yeah. Uh, I missed it. So anyway, we walked to the other hall. Walked past. Like out, outdoors, they had tented areas where people could just line up for panels or oh. workshops or you know whatever it was. <laughs> uh, it was just like, here's an outdoor herding corral for people that are lining up for the next thing that are in some other area. So we hang out in this tent. Yeah. So help it was us, just, help it was, us build some Tesla. Right. It was just a bunch of people standing under a tent, all like most of them in cosplay, like sitting on the ground outside. It was very hot, uh, but at least they were in shade because the tent had been built. Uh, we get to the other hall, get in there, and they're like, okay, this has got to be where the anime is. And it looked like the most bootleg-ass flea market I've ever seen. Really? It, was, it was all stuff for sale. So it was all shops and yeah. kiosks. And some of them were like, oh, here's a wig shop. Cool. Like, we can look at some good wigs. Like, here's some places that are selling stuff that's kind of meant for cosplay. But none of it really jumped out. And also, I think uh, Dan and I maybe learned our place a little bit when Dan walked up to a couple of those places and said, you got anything like Goku or Vegeta cosplay? <laughs> and the, the girl there was like, no. <laughs> like we had just asked for the most basic ass <laughs> thing on the planet. You walked up we and, had. You walked up and asked for Gex. The video yeah. game equivalent of like, you got yeah. any like, Gex, copies of Gex here? No, that's, come on. Give Dragon Ball some more credit than Gex. <laughs> um Anyway, so we, we walked around and looked at a bunch of stuff. There was like a whole section selling fucking swords. Sure. Like, hey, you want a giant sword? Yeah. Hey, you want like you want five key different keyblades? Yeah. yeah, they had all that shit. Uh, were they wooden or like you know, real-ish? The keyblades were wooden. The swords were metal. Okay. And they had actual genuine metal swords. They had some wooden ones as well. Yeah. Uh, Got to get equipped for the keyblade party. Yeah. Right. And there were some <laughs> a couple of places selling. I'm always ready. Uh, yeah. Uh, you always got to be ready. Uh, a couple of places selling video game stuff. It was like, hey, sure. you want to buy a Wii or some Donkey Kong? Conga bongos <laughs> like used stuff. Uh, or like a splinter cell xbox 360 of course you know just yeah. anime convention shit you know and so dan and i we, we, so originally the, we had talked about doing our panel in full cosplay that was the plan mm -hmm. uh that plan fell through on phase one so in this hour we were like okay let's see if we, if we can get over there and we can find some like a, a reasonably priced vegeta outfit sure we're, and a Goku, we're going to get them. Or at least like the hair or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And something. couldn't find anything along those lines. So we settled on t-shirts. I spent $50 on two t-shirts, and they are the thinnest, most bootleg-ass oh, shirts. Oh. Uh, they were fucking awful, ill-fitting, just felt like they I were going to just shirts. rip. It. Yeah, and they, yeah, uh, nice font work. Yeah, yeah. Ex excellent work all around, very legit. Was that a booth that had a lot of those shirts, or did they have a lot of just a lot of shit? They had a lot of shirts. They okay. were very shirt-focused, okay. and so it was like a ton of anime shirts. So I found the best part about dealer's halls like that are you got to target the booths that look like they're just a dude cleaning out their trunk or closet or whatever yeah. because you can barter them down to basically, I am doing you a favor by taking this right. off of your yeah. hands. Let me get this out of here. Like, I will take all these shitty DVDs of, like, a His talking cat or whatever for a dollar. And yeah. they'll be like, great, awesome. My, great space for me to buy more cosplay yeah. items. Yeah, you're doing me a favor. Yeah. There were, like, multiple booths that were just dedicated to selling Funko Pops. Which was disgusting. You said there yeah. was one built. There was one, there was one booth that was completely built out of Funko Pops. Of course. And then inside were more Funko Pops to sell Funko Pops. It just it was <laughs> it made my fucking skin crawl. <laughs> so that was it. That and then we had to get back. So uh, like uh, and then as we were walking out, there was a sign that said Kencha Hall, it and lives. that's where the artist alley was. And that's where and then there was some more stuff down there. Did you go to the uh, artist alley? No, we didn't. We couldn't make it. Yeah. Uh, we were out of time. So that's the most anime there. part. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So it, yeah, so I guess I don't know. Like uh, going to other, I, I was thinking more like trade show or even packs. 
uh, which is, you know, open to the public, that it would be extravagant booths run by big anime. Yeah. And they would be having a stage show. Like the purveyors or something like of that. video of yeah. anime series. That right? they would be there selling stuff, but also yeah. giving presentations. But it sounds like that's what all the panels are. You know, there's a lot of panels. There's a lot of like anime watching yeah. rooms and yeah, and, such and like Crunchyroll and... had two. They had a, they had a room there that they were running panels out of, and then they had the offsite thing, which is where we were. We were in LA Live, kind of close to where Microsoft's uh, E3 stuff was mm -hmm. uh, over there at the Conga Room, and so they had a separate. It was air conditioned, very nice. They had a stage set up and and cameras, and they were doing a. They streamed it, um, and we did our thing, and it was fun. And and then I am like I met some people who came out to say hi, and nice. then immediately went to the airport and flew out. Wow! It was a very whirlwind. No anime luggage. Day. Did you do the luggageless yeah. flight? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Which was completely badass. But then yeah. it yeah. led to me having to like manage my phone battery a little bit in terms oh, sure. of like oh, I don't really have any way to charge this. Um. Yeah. So I yeah I don't know. It was it was a whirlwind tour of the world of anime. I wish I would have had a little bit longer because there was like some stuff I was like got wanted to look around and see if I could find anything cool. But walking around that dealer hall stuff, like it all looked hmm. bad. Oh yeah. Like it all just looked super low rent and shitty. And you know, like I I would figure like because I know the stuff exists. The like fucking crazy expensive but also well made uh, cosplay gear and models oh, and all this yeah. other stuff, but. This just looked like the ass end of it. it that like... stuff you're not going to find at the con so much because it's like you come to the con in your cosplay. Sure. There are, yeah. you know, there are going to be separate like a cosplay swap events and stuff leading mm -hmm. up to a big con. And then, yeah, as far as like quality items goes, those mostly exist in the artist alley. Those are the people who are really putting in work because it's like it's very hard to get a table. So you have to be like legitimate right. yeah. Yeah. to get in there in the first place. I, you know, I have friends who have been trying for five years. But I was years. even interested in just like official stuff. Mm. And That's, official yeah. stuff and anime mm. don't always go hand in hand, uh, which I had forgotten. It, you, you thought that like, oh, you know, in this era of streaming services and, you know, all this other stuff, like it's kind of got a little more legit. Yeah. But you go there and you're like, oh, no, this is still, no, still fucking... still dude selling VHS tapes of Fucking Miami Sailor Mike Moon. is still there somewhere fucking I, doing whatever it not is. A dragon what you could, did. Not allowed you could, no. a dragon. You could take oh, yeah. the alley out of the anime, but you can't. Yeah. Or wait, the other way around. Yeah. You I had the you exact know. opposite experience in all the uh, dealer halls that I've been to. Like I've been to a ton of cons in the, in the Midwest and like, you know, down south, uh, you know, MobileCon, ASIN. Uh, and they've all, all the stuff's been legit. Like the dealers rooms, I, I haven't noticed any bootleg stuff, like what you guys are talking about. And I guess about. like, you know, I, I don't, I guess I can't say with hundred percent certainty that these t-shirts were bootlegs. They looked like it, but <laughs> they, totally but looked they like were it. flimsy and expensive in a way that bootlegs are. Yeah, exactly. It was like, oh, well, I'm the only reason I felt okay about buying them is because it was like, okay, the cosplay thing's not going to happen. We need, we need to buy the worst Dragon Ball t-shirts we can find, and we need them right fucking now. Wait, what's the point of an expensive bootleg? Isn't the whole reason you buy a bootleg to save money? Because if you don't know it's a boot... Because mm. they had to pay for the booth, so yeah. obviously they've got a lot of overhead. So they're just trying to get one so over on people. they need to charge you. I see. And the thing about a bootleg is you can make it do anything you want mm, on it. So okay. you're not going to find officially licensed merch of, you know, Bart Simpson talking about bombing Saddam mm. but but you... they didn't have any of that stuff either no, like yeah. this all looked like <laughs> no, no 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 Goku peeing on anything no I didn't see Goku Man. peeing at all the the, the fucking <laughs> the raciest thing I that's saw that's why you're mad about yeah. it you didn't see Goku the peeing. raciest thing I saw was a t-shirt that was like a sports jersey logo that said hentai 69 and yeah. 69 the big numbers and I was like ha ah, yeah I get that and then I saw the actually no you know what the one equivalent of that of a fucking bootleg Bart Simpson shirt I saw was a t-shirt that said Sailor Bruno Mars. Oh. Uh, okay. And it, yeah. yeah. No, that was my reaction as well. Like, oh, huh. God. And there was some kind of fucking Szechuan sauce shirt that really made me angry when I saw it. Well, it, thank uh, you for taking us inside the Anime Expo experience. Yeah. Thanks. I would love to go back and actually like see what it has to offer for reels. Uh, but you know, it, it felt like we went in the wrong door or something. I mean, We're like, yeah. Be honest, though. Would you sit in a room and watch anime with people? No, I don't, you know, no, like that's, there are ways to watch anime that don't involve yeah. me going to a yeah. thing. I mean, I've been I, to plenty of cons and I never, never do that. You know. Like if I was there and with a bunch of friends and we were drunk oh, that's, and it was like, okay. I guess like we just need to sit down somewhere yeah. and they're showing anime here. Might as well. You're talking about the after hours. 
experience. Oh, sure, the the yeah, yeah. midnight plus rooms where they turn off the lights and then will suddenly yell hand check and make everyone raise their hands up and shine flashlights around the room. Yeah, that's the one. Those are, yeah, those are real. I'm Why sure. would they do the hand check? Oh, because they're showing hentai. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Huh. Got it. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. And they want to make sure people aren't jerking it. Okay, that makes sense. I, I thought they were going to try to make sure that like people weren't like, you know, it. It. no, the people weren't like being, uh, to make sure there was no heavy petting going on sure, okay, or something sure, like that sure, sure. amongst consensual partners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, that's, I mean, that's not allowed either. What the fuck? What are you doing there then? <laughs> I don't know. Came all this that's, way. That's what you need the Keyblade for. Yeah, I uh, guess so. Well, thanks for that uh, travel report, travel log. I would happily go back. Okay. I would happily attend another anime convention what's, someday because I'm fascinated. What's the biggest one close to here? For anime. Then mm. that like just happened. Though. Yeah, yeah. It's in like May, typically. Would you, would you yeah. go to that? I would consider it. <laughs> Uh-oh. Mm. All right. I would consider it. Cause I, that I, one's a nice size because it's you know in the San Jose Convention Center, which is only a few halls that aren't nearly as big as, as mm-hmm. E3. It's right between two hotels, so you don't have yeah. to like walk around to get to places. Yeah, I think I was just left with this feeling of just like, what do people do here? Because get like drunk and meet up with their friends. Okay, yeah. I mean, yeah. That, if you got a lot of out of town friends and you need to congregate, and that's you know, we I think we know plenty of people that do that at PAX. Yeah, and so that aspect of it makes sense. I guess I just walked around and go like, there doesn't seem like there's that much to do here. Like there are plenty of things to do around here, but also it's downtown LA, which sort of sucks. Yeah. So like, if you wanted to just get together with your handful of friends. I feel like you could justify, hey, we're having a friends weekend. Where are you having it? Vegas. I don't know. A place that's set up for us to get fucked up and get into hijinks. Well, yeah. I mean, the 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 trick is to like just stock your hotel room up with yeah. Like, okay, hey, everyone, bring something. I'll bring the Gatorade. You bring the vodka. Yeah. And, and I, we'll I, just put, fill up a bunch of those and bring them in our backpacks. And I feel like you could, well, I guess, you know, there's the chance of like running into random people when you're out and about and that kind of social stuff. And if you want to cosplay in front of people, there's that aspect yeah, of it. They'll, yep. they'll organize but, like photo shoots, like, yeah, oh, let's get yeah. a group together and do a persona. And right. Everyone will have a costume. But like at that point, if you're like stock your hotel room up, I'm feeling like if, you, if you're going to have like a fucking weekend where you're going to hang out with your friends that you only see once or twice a year. Just figure out who's got the biggest house and say, come here. We'll watch whatever fucking anime we want. <laughs> And order pizzas to this house yeah. and stay up all night and whatever. And and I feel like that would be that could have, be as good a time. I have friends who like do that with their WoW guild, but they go to Aruba twice a year, every year, and just fucking party in Aruba with their whole WoW bad. guild. They don't and play they, WoW. No. Okay. They just drink. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. There's something there's something to be said about like congregating, like yeah. being in a place, you know, surrounded by like minded individuals, you know, you know you meet, right. you've yeah. got this, and, and you meet people like ho- yeah. hopefully you you're, you're kind of meeting people along the way. Yeah. And, and you accidentally sort of give some underage people alcohol. It's, like it's just sure. the con experience. Yeah. The con indeed. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for that trip report. Let's no problem. Take, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Time to keep your domicile secure. Oh, my zone? Yes. Keep people out of my zone? That's right. You definitely don't want anyone getting in your zone. Get out of my sphere. That's right. Stay out of the space. My virtual fence. Uh huh. It's right here. You can't see it. That's that right. Means don't cross. Exactly. Simple Safe will provide said virtual Ooh. fence. Wow. For fourteen ninety nine a month. That's right. You get the gear, and there's no contracts or anything like that. It's a monthly fee. You you buy the gear. Yep. Uh, and you can kind of customize that based on what you need. You know, you need, uh, you got you got multiple doors you want to keep track of. You got windows. What 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 areas, what potential points of entry into your sphere? You got to worry about ingress. Yes. Uh, and, you know, video cameras and stuff oh, yeah. like that. And all of this is, is hardened to the point where, hey, if, uh, if someone tries to destroy it, it calls the cops. Hardened, huh? Yeah. It's like somebody sets off an EMP outside. Yeah. So, well, I, I, look, I'm not going to vouch. I, I, I don't. I don't know the specifics. We don't know how if, hard if it is. If it is talking. EMP resilient, okay. that I can't say. Okay. But if someone tries to yank this thing off the wall, someone tries to smash up your keypad, mm-hmm. it's calling the cops. Oh wow. It's smart security. It's like, hey, that just thing... just you tried to break the thing, so we're going to set the thing off. The thing knows what it's doing. Exactly. That's 
a fail safe. Mm -hmm. if, if the storm takes up out your power, Simple Safe is ready. If it cuts your phone line, Simple Safe is ready. Wow. Built in kind of cellular technology. That sounds like magic. In conjunction with Wi Fi, multiple ways for it to get the word out if things go awry around your house. Any any sufficiently advanced security system is indistinguishable from magic. No, that's that's, that's the quote. That is exactly that is exactly right. And again, fourteen ninety nine a month. No contracts, no hidden fees, uh, nothing like that. You want to know more about it? Straightforward, I do. Yeah. All right. Well, if you want to know more about it, here's what you do. Go to simplisafe.com slash bombcast. That's S-I-M-P-L-I-S-A-F-E dot com slash bombcast. Lock down your zone. That's right. Keep it tight. Keep it safe. Keep it secret. Before we get into the news, Jan, yes, I can't help noticing your chest wear. <laughs> yes, my the new shirt. Chest wear. The large, Do you mean his shirt? The large logo. What are you talking about? On it's your a, on your abdominal section. I'm it's displaying stuff on my clothing. What are you repping over there? I'm repping uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, they had an event at the lovely Cow Palace here in San Francisco. Lovely. It's nothing lovely about the Cow Palace. <laughs> yeah, that's also true. The history, I suppose, is the, lovely. Yeah. It's a it's a long history of wrestling and uh, weed shows yeah. and gem shows and the Dickens Fair. The Dickens Fair is pretty uh, fun. They're, they're hemp shows, not weed shows. I'm sorry. You're right. <laughs> hemp did you, goods. Did you see Netflix has a weed cooking competition show yeah. now? Yep. Oh, Basically Top man. Chef for cooking with weed. Which is weird because it's still federally a crime. <laughs> eh. If it's anything like the British Bake Off, I'll watch it. British Baked Off. Sorry. Uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, New Japan show. So uh, I'm Thank kind you. of a, a, a casual fan of New Japan. Just I'll tune in for the big matches that people say like, oh, tune in for Kenny Omega or the Young Bucks. Oh. Um, so this is my first full event watching New Japan. And holy smokes, does it blow the WWE and everything I'm used to out of the water. Hell yeah, it does. Is that it makes it super hard to want to watch WWE actively or regularly Hell again. You just yeah, get such does. a different thing out of yeah. the the shows. Like that watching some of that stuff, it was, it was like I can't remember what the first Wrestle Kingdom it was the first Wrestle Kingdom that I think got broadcast on pay per view in the States. Might okay. have been the, my first like encounter with, mm -hmm. with like their stuff. Uh and yeah, it was just like that was the thing that made me actually excited about watching wrestling yeah as opposed to watching wrestling like it was backwards porn uh fast forwarding through the matches and just watching the story stuff here every every match seemed to actually matter as opposed to wwe where like they'll have throw throw away less than a minute matches yeah here everything was at least 10 minutes mm. and like I, I may not have known all the names but at least you could tell like okay this person's a big deal or this person's going to be a big deal and it's it's just nice to have like a different place to watch wrestling other than the, the WWE because for a while it was just them. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Can you if what am I trying to ask here? Does New Japan broadcast everything they do? Like, can you keep up with everything that they are putting on if you're not there? In they person? have a streaming service. Yeah, yeah. they do now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's not as elaborate as the WWE network, but it's not. And and they don't. I don't th really think they run the equivalent of like a weekly television show. Okay. Also, I guess that's what I was yeah. wondering. Is so, there is there an ongoing thing you can keep up with remotely? Yeah, you you yes. can watch their shows and and all that, but also. You know, like I, I'm not an expert. I, I think, like you, like I, yeah. I tend to kind of tune in for the the bigger events. Right. Like usually, it's the events that are going to get English commentary, the ones they've realized, which are more and more of them now. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, or the ones that I'm usually kind of looking at. Um, I watched the the G1 last year. Right. That was like right. the first time where That's I was like, like no, I'm going to watch all this stuff. It's like mm -hmm. a huge tournament, twenty twenty some odd shows. Um, but like they don't, they also don't necessarily go as storyline heavy as American wrestling okay. has. It's more about the actual wrestling, yeah. right? Uh, the the issues between the wrestlers are, you know, it, it it is more often just like, oh, well, I want to win the championship, or you know, the the personal issues become things of just like, you know, is this fight of about honor or something? And they've started to expand in some ways because they brought in some people like some like Chris Jericho has come in and had some mm -hmm. matches there that have been like there was one that was just like a, a real bloodbath uh, that that was not in line with what you think of as the New Japan like strong style evolved or whatever rest type of wrestling that they normally do. 
Um, so they've been expanding as well. So it feels like that they're kind of like reaching out to American fans, but not in a way that they're trying to just copy what WWE is doing. It's like, Hey, we want to offer a true alternative to what they're doing, but still something you can sink your teeth into and, and understand why these people are wrestling and all this other stuff. But the, the shows themselves are less about like, here's a guy in the ring talking for 20 minutes about the matches they're going to have later and more just like we're having the matches you'll get some talking a little bits and pieces but usually it's like i think they're still big on the post match press conference yes uh, yeah. and and they've had things evolve out of that where mm-hmm. someone's giving an interview and then chris jericho runs it's in like and jumps him and then yeah. suddenly you're like oh well i guess shit that's going to be a big match S- next time um so you're saying that WWE is to soap operas as new japan is to shown in anime <laughs> you know it's a lot to unpack. Yeah, because a lot of shonen is a journey of like a right. It's like trying to win the thing. I'm yeah. trying Coming to the, be the best, yeah. in, instead of like, oh, you ran over my dog. Is that yeah. a wrestling plot line? Yeah. Yes. When yeah. Tri- Triple H ran over the Big Show's dog. Uh, there. Well, <laughs> well, a lot actually, of stuff. with uh, the Big Show the and big cars. Show, the cars <laughs> jumping on a, a casket. <laughs> uh, yep. At one point, uh, I believe Al Snow was made to eat his dog uh, oh. by the big boss man. Yep. What? Yep. Um, <laughs> Served it to him. Yeah. Al Snow's done a lot. Because the dog was named Pepper, you see, and then the joke was uh-huh. they were serving pepper steak. Oh, uh, he's like, it's a little peppery. And then he goes, <laughs> ah, ah, I gotcha. You fucking idiot. It's a dog. How can you not see this joke twist How from a mile away? How can you not taste away? that this is a dog? It's big boss man was uh, a talented individual in many areas. Probably a great chef. He's a corrections officer, Cobb County, Georgia. What do you do? The uh, other interesting thing about the New Japan show, though, is that afterwards there were a poop ton of people trying to plug their own wrestling-related YouTube channel or podcast. A oh, person sure. had set up like a makeshift uh, table outside in the parking lot, <laughs> saying like, "Hey, like, come get my flyer. Oh, we're going to wow. talk about the show afterwards." There was another lady yeah. talking about like, hey, wow. like listen to our podcast. Other people had like flags of their YouTube channels. Like, hey, you know. You nice wanna... of them to do that like outside. And yeah. not, oh, like, no, no. Some of this it... was happening inside. Uh, okay. Yeah. But, but I see, I think about like the the bad time of wrestling, uh, of the, like those bad times of the Attitude Era. Okay. When every fucking person was had holding a up a URL on a sign yeah. in the crowd. Mm. Uh, now it's just like fucking someone's big dumb head, and I'm like, well, that sucks. But <laughs> who would do that? Who, uh, a real, a real asshole. Um, but like those days of like when people were holding up URLs for websites, yeah. really just had this desperate kind of just uh, yeah. That that always really bummed me out. So at least they're like setting up a table somewhere. Right. Yeah. They're they're trying to they there was someone trying to give away m- like their own merch hmm. so you could go listen to their or watch their YouTube channel. Hmm. It was it was huh. interesting. Yeah, bizarre. Wrestling, the the world around wrestling of, like, there are so many podcasts. There's so many, so many things. Yeah, it's it's there's there's a whole lot. Anyway, yeah, I, I watched that show on the television. I understood that the commentary was not the greatest. It's not, you know, I, I and I've I've been like people. So the, people have given the English commentary on these New Japan shows a lot of shit over the years, especially the ones that broadcast on Access TV mm-hmm. because they bring in different commentators for those. So Jim Ross comes in and does commentary for yeah. for the Access TV shows, and you know he he's a great announcer, but he's not like intimately familiar with the characters and the wrestlers and the issues and stuff like that you're just calling what he sees exactly and so if someone's got a finishing move that has a very specific name like the storm breaker you know he, he's not going to know, know yeah. what it's called and so they're going to say like ah it's like a neck breaker kind of thing and <laughs> and you know and and they're going to call it as they see it as they know it yeah and you know there are cases where he's getting the names of the wrestlers wrong and, and stuff like that and you're like whatever it's like uh, mistakes that can happen uh, i don't know about that one it's a bummer yeah, but, that one's yeah. a real bummer. Like, I see how it could happen. Uh, I, I see how it would happen. Uh, but it's a, it's a situation where it's like, hey, you know, I like Jim Ross a lot, but I don't, he doesn't, he's not why I'm there watching it. So He's just a talented individual that right, they happened that to. That seems like slightly out of his depth in this case. Sure. Like he can call the matches just fine and, and all that sort of stuff, but it's someone who was more familiar with the ongoing situations that are happening, that are unfolding before us. Yeah. 
mm -hmm. uh, would be better suited. So the, the default English commentators they have for all their other shows that are not on TV, it's, uh, was it Kevin Kelly and Don Callis? Of uh, Ring of Honor. Or, yeah, yeah. I guess, do they both do, are they both Ring of Honor guys? Kelly is. Don Callis is writing TNA now, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. booking or something. Um, and I don't think they're, I, I think Kevin Kelly's really good. I think Don Callis is really bad. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in a way mm -hmm. that like is infuriating because he knows it, but also they talk way insidery in a way that kind of takes you out of it sometimes. Mm. Well, that produce a little bit of the magic. Yeah, they are they're using insidery terms and stuff on occasion that in a way that just it it feels like it's underselling the the action that you're watching. Right, uh, and it, it's 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 also maybe weird. not the most used uh, new viewer friendly strategy. No, no definitely not. Uh, Definitely not. Because um, like I'm somebody who's been interested in maybe checking out New Japan. You know, I never had a, had a pass with WWE, but just hearing the way people talk about it's really interesting. Yeah. And so I, I imagine I would have a less than great time if I hopped into a stream and heard a lot of technical. It's not that it's technical. It's that it's like there are like Don Callis in particular will will in during Kenny Omega matches, for example, uh, he will. And, and this is something that like bad guy commentators have done for years, uh, but it has it comes across in a very American commentary sort of way that doesn't mesh well with what they're presenting. Mm. Uh, where he's like, "Oh, you know, I was talking to Kenny before the match, and we're good buddies," and like like trying to like, get himself over, like, like, yeah. trying to be there with the uh, the the popular wrestler, and in a way that just it comes across mm. as lame mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. unnecessary. Uh, and it doesn't mesh well with the. Like I can imagine that working well in WWE, where it's like, totally. oh yeah, these guys that definitely is, yeah, have and a that's, thing. That's, and you know, Bobby Heenan, Bobby and... Heenan's whole career has been based around that sort of stuff. And you still hear commentators on that show today be like, I was talking to this guy. He's got a strategy for this, and you know, it's just they didn't have that conversation. But it doesn't matter. It's just they're mm -hmm. just advancing the storyline as they as they see fit, and so on and so forth. And so I yeah, I don't know, whatever. I I don't love any of the English commentary that they do. I guess is the short version of that. Uh, but Kevin Kelly's really good. I like him. So would you go back? Oh, I totally go back. Uh, they were advertising a show in Long, Long Beach. Beach and then another one in Anaheim. It's not too far from up here. So yeah. mm -hmm. the Anaheim show is a different. It's it called, was that the one that was Lions Break? Yes. So I, I think, think that's that was... they have a um the young boys, the the young lions. Ah. Uh, that are the kind of up and comers. It's like maybe like their NXT or maybe their okay, kind of that, more developmentally cool. focused thing. I think that show mm -hmm. is going to happen in conjunction with an anime convention that's happening in Anaheim. Ooh. And I think it's going to be. <laughs> Let's just double down. Yeah. I'm uh, I think it's going to largely be uh, less lesser known performers. Okay. Uh, which would probably still be cool. Yeah, definitely. But yeah. And then I think they're doing an East Coast show. I think mm -hmm. is the other thing they announced. That's bound to be crazy. Yeah. Well, Speaking of crossovers, yeah, they had a CEO uh, cross New Japan just a few weeks ago, a couple weeks oh. ago or something. Yeah, down yeah. in Daytona or whatever. So, like, Kenny Omega was there, and he brought over a bunch of uh, folks uh, from Japan to, yeah, and put on an actual wrestling show in conjunction with this fighting game tournament, which which was, uh, it, it was, it was, it was all right. Of course, Jibaley, you know, who runs the tournament, booked himself and made himself win, yeah. you know. Because that's that's the man who's been bringing a wrestling ring into his top eight for yeah. years now. <laughs> yeah, and like wrestling, or like you know, uh, players are coming down to like wrestling entrances and stuff. Yeah. Infiltration did Val Venus's yeah. this past year. K. Brad with the uh, Stone Cold. Yep. Yeah. Someone tossing him the beer. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, that's yeah, good, goofy. Like th that good. type of theatrics, I think is is like goofy self-aware theatrics yep. like make esports much more totally. it's super fun it's nice and too because it's like to right me. before evo it's the last big tournament before evo right. so yeah. everyone gets to have a lot of fun yeah. and like but it's it's been fun watching that like evolve from like that makeshift like a uh, steel cage that they put up <laughs> yeah. which was just like a dumb fence uh, to this full blown i mean you know, early wrestling <laughs> steel cages were oftentimes just a dumb fence <laughs> so totally. But yeah, they they put on a pretty good show. Yeah. Um, it, it was interesting watching um, the production side of it because it was done by you know they're typically like fighting game tournament streamers. Mm. Okay. Uh, and watching them transition into like putting on a wrestling show, it was it was rough around the edges. I heard some but... people say that the commentary was like surprisingly good. Yes, it was. I was gonna yeah talk yeah. about that. Yeah, they they had their roles down. You know, there yeah. was one of them that was you know the, very much a, you know like a heel commentator and stuff, and they, they did a pretty good job. Yeah, yeah, like they knew cool. the wrestlers and stuff. Did better job than like Jim Ross does sometimes. Yeah, maybe. I'll be yeah. honest, but 
It's a good. It's it's yeah. It was cool to watch that, but I'm really glad that uh, we've got a new fan here. It's great. It's fantastic. I'd recommend it. Um, I give the event. Six stars. Take whoa, that, Meltzer. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Coming for the crown. That's a lot of stars. Whoa. Did I see there was like a pretty serious injury in yeah. here? Oh, yeah. That ugh. Seeing that in person, the whole crowd, it's like one of those guys, like, ooh. Nice. Uh, and then they just kept replaying it. Uh, um, uh, but the guy got right uh, back up and, wait. I thought I read he broke his neck. Yeah. He, he, broke, his, he broke his neck. He got up? right back up. Nailed they, his finisher finished the match. twice. What? And he finished the match. The walked word, away. The word was that he, yes, yeah, so he walked out under his own power. The word is that he collapsed backstage. What the? F um, I mean, you were just like on pure adrenaline at that point. Oh my god! It's it's not the first story of someone being very seriously injured and still finishing the oh match. Oh my god! Uh, Wrestling through a broken friggin' neck. Yeah. Uh, you know, torn quads, all yeah. that sort of stuff. Like, I guess the adrenaline in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. yeah. And, and probably just some amount of devotion to your. Yeah. craft yeah, yeah. yeah. There, i mean you know you've been probably been thinking about this show for mm. months there's a real the show must go on yeah i guess so mentality Ooh. to this carny ass shit uh, yeah yeah. Huh. Um, yeah i don't know that yeah he, he's still being uh looked at uh mm. and i don't know that they've necessarily reported what the full extent of it is but they did say that he was like sitting up and talking and oh, all this other stuff okay. which are which are really good signs uh there are it's a, maybe this is a bad thing, but there are a lot of people that have been through broken neck injuries and come back and wrestled again. Okay. Um, so it's not necessarily, I think, yeah, like you, you tend to think of like broken neck is just like, that's it, man. Fucking yeah, game over. I'm not doing anything. Right. I'll be lucky if I can move my pinkies ever again or anything, you know, uh, that sort of stuff. But like plenty of people have come back from, what would be neck career injuries? Yeah, yeah, neck yeah. injuries that'd be, you know, horrible. That are whatever, they are horrible. Professional wrestlers are a hearty group of people. Yeah. yeah. 28, I think, Hiromu is. Yeah. So there's there's time for him to recover, mm -hmm. hopefully. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. All right. Uh, thank you for that, Trent. Man, a lot thank of field reporting going on this week. Mm -hmm. we, we, went, we went places. Yeah. On location. Real so quick on the topic of wrestling, and you guys watch Glow? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was just uh, I need to. Season two was season pretty two. Th pretty goddamn it, good. It went some places and it got kind of dark at times. Yeah, that I wasn't expecting. Uh, but yeah, still that the, show. Still, it can't be fun. Th there's an episode of it that is basically an episode of the glorious women of wrestling, like just start to finish. Cool. Oh wow, cool. Yeah. And so I was wondering, like, you know, you, you have some familiarity with older wrestling show how did, it is on par with some of their their old skits yeah? for sure okay yeah, yeah they cool. tr really tried to emulate that I was, I was wondering how often do, do they act goofy. incredibly poorly yeah, I mean, oh, all yeah. Of them. Great. there's yes. like inconsistencies on like the color yeah. of things that they're wearing Great. and yeah. yeah okay so yeah that that's super, uh it's super consistent season two <laughs> of that show was pretty goddamn good mm -hmm. check it out if you like wrestling cool. even if you don't especially if you don't maybe you just like wrestling. tv hmm <laughs> <laughs> Check it out if you like Allison Bree. She's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's get into the news for the week, shall we? Yeah. Um, the, the news cycle has pretty much been dominated, at least since, what, last Thursday, Friday, late yeah. last week, by a pair of firings that took place at ArenaNet, yeah. make, makers of Guild Wars. <coughs> uh, I guess real long, well, somewhat long story short, uh, one of their narrative designers got into a thread on Twitter about you know, some fairly deep technical narrative design stuff mm -hmm. about, you know, the difficulties of imbuing a character with personality when MMO players want to, you know, ascribe their own personalities to the characters. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, very, fairly technical narrative Especially, design you know, stuff. The, the, the nature of an MMO and storytelling in MMOs and stuff, you can only, you know, make that, it's a, it's a difficult thing to solve. Yeah. Um, so somebody responded to her with some feedback, which I guess they thought to be... To, you know, fairly good natured, and she responded in you know a somewhat acerbic way mm -hmm. to them. Uh, oh, she went off, and then <laughs> she went off on that. And dude. then uh, another male developer at uh, ArenaNet defended her on Twitter, and then I don't know, let's say twelve hours later, they were both summarily fired from ArenaNet. Mm. Yeah, so there's definitely more to that story, and that she was you know the target of you know. A mob of sorts. Yeah, I mean know? that's that's really what makes this a story. And that's, that's kind of was the you know um, the the two aspects are you know a a the, the typical rage hurricane forms yep. 
uh, in, in an online community. And while her response may have been kind of misdirected, like at this guy, she had been, you know, harassed. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's really consistently. It's, and this like broke the camel's back. Yeah. It's, re- it's really just the speed with which Arena Net just dropped the hammer on these people. Yeah. That, yeah. That and, made and, this and, and, such you know, a. a like, and also, like, her, her reaction, like, I, I get it. Like, at some yeah. point, like, and, and I've been tempted to res- and, and i have i've responded to people in a similar idea you know yeah. they're definitely like there is an aspect of people coming at you with the the same advice a billion times yeah uh yep. at a point that like you know someone is like yeah no i get it it, <laughs> it doesn't work for a lot of reasons that i'm not going to get into right here on twitter yeah the thing you're suggesting doesn't work yeah uh and yep. and that can be very frustrating because you're like i i don't want to have like a multi-hour long conversation with a person about why their suggestion is actually bad uh and also there are a lot of people it's like Ugh. so yeah there are definitely times when you lash out on social media yeah like, you're so like look man i i've done this for a long time i hear like if, if the answer was the, as simple yep. as the thing you're suggesting don't you think we would have fucking done that by now like yeah. you know like yes I, believe me absolutely the way the way i saw it I, I saw there was a, a blog post by a, i think it's like an anonymous developer mm. i think it's ask a developer it's basically yeah, yeah somebody who does this work but is not naming themselves but they the way they described it was this person basically asked the equivalent of have you tried unplugging it and plugging it back in pretty <laughs> much yeah uh, like that was the level of of advice you're trying to give this person who's done this professionally for 10 plus years yeah um not not to put the cart before the horse i mean i I don't think anybody at least nobody that i've seen has like fully defended the way she responded yeah right you know like like i think even even the people that would want to take her side here concede that it you know it could be grounds for some kind of you look at talking to go like ah that's some kind of disciplinary action some kind of conversation internally or clarification to, to resolve this, but that's not what happened. What, what, right. what the what the appearance is is that the management just capitulated immediately to a, a hate mob. Right. Like yeah. the second that it started picking up that's, steam. That's the end result. Yeah. Like the the. Yeah. Again, like no, I I don't see anybody defending what she said. What I see and what I feel like is appropriate is people saying I understand why she would respond that way. Yes. And and uh, I feel like it's telling <laughs> everybody I know that works in some kind of front facing internet. Mm-hmm role of any kind <laughs> totally understands why she would would have said something like that yes exactly not to condone it but uh, yeah yeah absolutely yeah uh but also but it, yeah to at some point you are you're like not necessarily representing the company but yeah. you are a part of that company sure and yeah your interactions are public you know and um they can make the company look bad yeah obviously you know, that that is that is a valid aspect of this but i mean but she's also but, she's given some quotes or she's given talked to a couple outlets since this happened and said yeah. like there had never been any discussion internally that's, of any of this stuff i yeah, never received any thing, kind of warning yeah. or any kind of messaging from management at all i fully would have the sort of thing. some sort of reprimand um but uh, like a clear clarification of what that policy is it doesn't sound like it was in place right no um, yeah and and to to respond to this by just immediately firing the people that were involved seems when, you know, it sounds like that there was no kind of guidance along those yep. lines. Uh, it, it's just seems like the fucking most chicken shit. Yep. Dumbass thing to do in yep. this situation. Like I, I don't, you know, like you, you know, the, the, one of the things they teach you in management or, you know, like when you kind of get into that is like, there's a certain aspect of just like, you got to stand with your people. You got to, mm. you got to, you know, when they fuck up, you got to kind of own it a little bit and say like, here's how we don't make sure this doesn't happen again. Because what message and does that send to the other employees? Exactly, yeah. You know, and, and you know, if, if these two had been ongoing problems, if they were on some kind of disciplinary plan already and they did this, and then maybe this is the thing that pushes you over the line. But the idea that just like, and oh, this is how we're responding to this situation is to let these people go uh, for this like relatively minor social media flare up yeah. that people are treat you know that, mm-hmm. that yeah that, that stirred up some kind of bullshit hate mob to respond to that like oh you're right guys we're just yeah we're letting them go sorry Fuck sorry that. please keep playing our game oh no we make this what game are for we you. gonna do we're yeah. so like they're so, we're so shook uh it makes that whole game look like it is teetering on the brink honestly because if that's what they're willing to do to try to fucking keep people playing their game is guild wars 2 gonna die in a month yeah like, cause that's what it looks like. Uh, 
I don't know. I just, I mean, like you have to have to imagine the chilling effect this is going to have on the people who still work there. Oh, sure. Yeah. That's how how little they can assume that the company has their back on anything. Right. Like that's the part of the thing is, yes, you, yes, you have to have your employees back to a certain extent. And when, and when people make mistakes, public ones, like, yeah, there is at some point a line that gets crossed where you're like, you can't work here anymore. Because of these things that or, happen. Or before that, several steps before that, hey, you can't say stuff like that right. representing or, yes. the company. Or, like, hey, we let's, need, let's have a let's, conversation let's, about... Let's figure out what the boundaries are for this sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, beforehand, maybe. There was a really good article, um, I think it was on The Atlantic, uh, <clears throat> that kind of stemmed from a combination of this and the plane... Did you guys see the plane bay thing? Yeah, fuck, oh, dude, man. That, oh Yeah, God. about how now basically we're against our will. We're all public figures. Right. Like If you have a social media presence, you are now have to consider yourself a public figure and what the ramifications well, of forget, that mean. Forget having a public or a social media presence. Like yeah, this, even this lady, This lady... He did yes. something as innocuous as get on a, an airplane mm-hmm. and has Trade now been seats with somebody and has now, now been yeah. bullied off of all social media yes. by by assholes yeah for for the crime of leaving her house and you know doing something and this trickles down yeah, to you know fuck? like oh let's say you had a conversation in discord and somebody took a screenshot of that and tweeted that like you it's you have to there's so many ways that you know things can be misconstrued like a conversation that you don't think is going to be public becomes public that you know, you need a little bit of security. You need to be able to rely on your company. You need to be able to rely on your coworkers. You need to be able to rely on p- the people that you trust around you that are part of your network to have your back to a degree. You know, to not immediately fold on this sort of stuff. Yeah, like to it, at least say, like, hey, let's work through this. And, and if we work through it and get to the end of it and realize that there are aspects of it that can't be worked through, then it's decision time around but that 12 stuff. hours but man. the idea but 12 hours and for this yeah yeah that's why you, i look at it and go like she didn't call anyone like re, re, also the, slur, like, yeah. Yeah. the timing just, the timing of it was that it took place on the 4th of july so effective and in fact they put out an awful statement where they literally said we dealt with this as fast as we could because we were out Jesus. on the fourth so the morning of the fifth we took care of it you know it's just like okay like so you had no time for deliberation whatsoever like, what are you taking that was your like, what immediate was the, response <laughs> All right. Yeah. I mean, I it just sure it, that seems fucking real shitty and real stupid and real short sighted. Uh, I wish you would have felt comfortable enough going to the company saying, "Hey, I'm being targeted. You know, can mm. you help me in some fucking way or protect me somehow?" But yeah. uh, the thing that frustrates she me, she felt inclined to just you know, she was super frustrated and yeah. lashed out. The thing that bugs me is just in, in the litany of comments I see about this stuff, there's so little willingness to try to like envision the context in which a person would react this way. Like I see so yeah. many people I see I see so many people looking at this one instance and just saying, Oh, like wow, what a toxic, crazy person she is. Like she got what she had coming or whatever. It's like no pe- nobody responds to at a single person like that. If you look yeah. for no see, every reason. tweet is like that, then it's like sure you can come right. to a conclusion, but if it's just uh, frustrate all it takes is having one bad day you know let's say something went wrong in the morning and like you don't get your breakfast or something just like <laughs> honestly like it can spiral it can be this yeah, pent-up sure. thing that just like all it takes is one little thing and you just think nothing of it because you are frustrated and it's so easy to send a tweet it takes like 30 seconds and it's done well i mean yeah. and I'm, I'm you know i'm talking about an ongoing context of yeah. when you work in a public facing role producing a thing that people are very passionate about for whatever reason a lot of people who are very passionate about things tend to be very awful about them yeah can be. you know like having people you've never met or worked with like questioning your competence and your work ethic and your intelligence and on and on for years on end like has a really deleterious effect on people's psyches you know like absolutely it yeah. it, it like grinds people down and yeah, makes them and, like we still don't know like you know i don't think the science has been done to determine like what we're doing to ourselves these days uh with what you know the effects of social media and all the other stuff you know yeah. like streaming all you know like like streaming as a job streaming as a lifestyle whatever yeah. like like all that sort of stuff like the long-term effects of being on the front lines of that for a very long time yeah. Even if and I, like I'm constantly I, on and always being critiqued and yeah yeah i i it's I, weird. I guarantee you she finds it lamentable that she felt like she had to respond that way in the first place. Like nobody wants to be in a situation where you yeah. feel like you have to, or not have to, but like you, in, you reflexively 
lash yeah. out at people who are consuming. You have your to work. become defensive, right? And, yes, and, and that's, sometimes that's, your defense isn't an aggression. That's exactly what I'm trying to get at: is that it heightens your your reflex to become defensive when you feel like you are on guard all the time already. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, it just you know there are aspects of this that I guess we don't know the whole story when it comes to just like, but, but you know, if, if you take it at, at what's out there, I mean, uh, the, the company's made statements. She's made statements. Like there's yeah, a fair amount of information on the table and it just right. it feels like this, this feels like a really dumb reaction to this situation. Yeah. Like so much could have taken place in an in intermediate sense before it got to yeah. this point that would have been way more constructive. Um, I did see, uh, uh, Anna McGill from remedy that we mm -hmm. had on the E3 show tweeted, yeah. tweeted something this morning that I took note of. Uh, awful as the arena that situation was, some good came of it. I was happy to see Remedy's community manager come talk to the writing team today about social media. Uh, we're all working together to craft clear policies and a harassment response plan so everyone knows where lines are drawn. Uh, and then she also went on and said, if your company doesn't have policies and plans already and they haven't talked to you about it, go talk to them and force the issue. Don't wait for a crisis. Yep, that's, so, that's smart. So yeah, like, you know, hopefully other companies can take a, a page from this. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird, uh, like social the media world, is the a world is weird. Social media is an incredibly fraught place for somebody yeah. to have, like to do their job basically. Right. And like, there needs to be a lot more discussion and a lot more policy around how to handle stuff like this. Uh, yeah, Jeff, what do I do if that one guy is like, no, I need that gameplay bigger. And I'm like, no, it's, it's too big already. And he goes off on what do I do? We gotta put the policy in place, man. Uh, we could, we could have another conversation with HR, yeah. <laughs> and try and force the issue, as they say, yep. and see. Um, that one guy, you know who you are. I, there's no guy. <laughs> there's no guy. Are you saying the guy's been in your head the He's entire like, time? Probably. All right, then my initial reaction of tell that guy to go fuck himself stands. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Ugly situation. Right. Yeah. Just. And unnecessary. It's like, it's like such a, such a, a over the top response that like you want to look at it and go like, oh, well, they must have done something else. They must have been on, on their last straw with these two people. Especially they the must other. Have been trouble, like problem employees. But you look at it and go like. The message. No. If, if, but if it's not, then this is like the fucking most over the top, insane overreaction to the situation possible like i yeah, i'm it's mind-blowing if if cowardly if you, like knee-jerk reaction yeah like yeah. what the fuck you what problem got fixed here especially when you look at the all, all the guy did was literally step in and say like hey i'm a dude who also designs this game and i don't get this kind of questioning of my competence that people like her do on a regular basis and like he also got swept up in the yeah it's fucking ridiculous Social media is terrible. You're probably right. You're definitely right. I don't know. I follow some hedgehogs on Instagram. What? Are yeah. Well, those aren't the, people. The one hedgehog animals. I animals are the Instagram. only valid social media <laughs> accounts to follow. Right, yeah. I can I can say that with yeah. some authority. Okay. Um. Let's see what else is going on this week. Uh, Todd Howard of Bethesda. Hi. Uh, was out there Hi, out Todd. there talking to. Uh, you're a gamer about Starfield a little bit. Uh, basically, like we're gonna make the game. We're in this world now where people are asking, okay, what consoles uh, is this game you're making coming yeah. out on? Yeah. Uh, and they basically asked him exactly that about Starfield. Here's what he said: uh, What systems we put it on? What what the hardware requirements uh, is still to be determined. Uh, we're pushing it. We're thinking very very far in the future. So we're building something that will handle next generation hardware. That's what we're building on right now. That's where our mind is. But that doesn't mean it wouldn't exist on the current systems as well. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, so. so potentially a split generation Maybe? game uh, built for the next set of consoles slash hardware, but potentially still ported to the existing machines. Yeah. Is what that sounds like, which seems sensible, I guess. Uh, but like, then you think about what that has to be if it runs on the old consoles and it's the same game, right? Like it's basically just a better looking version of a current gen game. Like that's how these. 
Well, if they're building it now, but they're also they're not actually building it, they are, you know, scoping it out and figuring out what it's going to be based sure. on what they think the next set of uh, consoles is going to be. Yep. If that's their main focus and they're really true to that, then it would be developed for that stuff first and ported back as opposed to, hey, we did it for Xbox One and PS4 and now it runs at a better frame rate on these other things. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's cool. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like it's it's so far, that still feels so far off that it's hard to even fathom uh, what we're really talking about. I could, uh, I could be like two years. Away. I mean, not this yeah, game. I'm getting this ready. game is yeah, not yeah. two years away. Necessarily, no, you're right. But like I mean, yes, consoles but could be. You're right, and it's, it's maybe three. It we'll, feels it feels a lot fresher because of like the the One X and the Pro, right? But in reality, we're getting we're getting there. We are. Yeah. Um. Just another tidbit to throw in here. This is from, uh, I got this from a story on Polygon by Charlie Hall. He also uh, wrote in here, uh, to put this into perspective, I asked the team at CD Projekt Red uh, if fa fans should expect to see Cyberpunk 2077 on next generation consoles. Uh, the developers there told me flat out that they haven't heard anything about what a next generation system would look like from either Sony or Microsoft. Yeah. While they're building their futuristic role-playing game for advanced PC graphics cards, they're also tailoring it specifically for the PS4 and Xbox One. I think that's the the larger thing of just like, you know, Starfield is far off because uh, par probably partially because details about what the next boxes are going to be are not getting out there. Yeah. You can start to speculate, I'm sure. There's probably enough of a pipeline for PC-based graphics hardware that you can start to think about what that might look like and right. what that power might be. And it seems like the days of uh, weird esoteric stuff like the cell processor are gone, right. so you're probably yeah. not going to have some weird paradigm change again. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you, you can you can start to probably... People way smarter than I will ever be can start to maybe figure out where they should start to think about putting a game power-wise. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's that's the maybe the other conversation I had a few times at E3 was about, you know, the kind of next hardware and, you know, for all those stories that were going over those fucking weird bullshit from a while ago, like, oh, some developers already have dev hardware. Like, no, like they're way, way earlier in the process yeah. than that. Uh, no one has a list of specs. No one, has, like that stuff just doesn't seem like it's out there. I don't need... I don't think they have it internally yet either. I think that they are probably starting to th get close to finalizing close that stuff, to probably. locking some stuff in, yeah. or at least like getting close to where they start bringing in developers and saying, Hey, what do you want? Uh, you know, we've, we've got this in mind, but we're, there's still some wiggle room with the amount of Ram or this or that, or, you know, like what's, what's holding you back. Uh, but I just, I don't think those conversations have really happened. Maybe they can port Skyrim a few more times in the meantime. Yeah. Sure. Actually, there's also a Todd Howard quote out there about those. He basically said, if you want us to stop porting Skyrim, stop buying the ports. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, and it's not like those ports are taking time away from the next games from that studio. Right. Yeah. What is it? Uh, well, Iron Galaxy did the... Did they? The Switch Skyrim, didn't they? I didn't yeah, I believe they did. Yeah. And that's a really good port of it. Yeah. So, Despite Dave Lang. Or because of? Who can say? <laughs> mm. Who can say? I don't know how games are made. <laughs> I'm not convinced that anybody does. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Warframe came up br briefly earlier in the show. Uh, they had TennoCon over the weekend. Yeah. Which, on the one hand, still weirds me out that there is a con for Warframe. On the other hand, I read that it's like the number four game on Steam. Yeah. So It's, it's, it's quite it's, big. It is way bigger than... Some people might think. Uh, they announced it for Switch. Yeah. Warframe, a, oh, wow. Warframe cool. coming to Switch. Oh. Uh, Panic Button is doing the port. They did Rocket League and Doom on the Switch. So. Mm -hmm. um, they made Doom run. Yes. Make this run. I, I Off of the back of this, they also announced a big new expansion. It's going to have, uh, well, two actually. Uh, but one of them is going to have like space combat. like Right, like ship combat. Planetary stuff, surface yeah. to space combat and stuff like that. So. Yeah. They continue adding stuff to that game. But I went and downloaded Warframe off of this news because everybody seemed all excited about it on what'd, Twitter. What'd you think? I didn't play it yet. Good call. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know. It's, it's, you know. You know what stopped me, though? Like, this is, it's sad. This is the world we're in. Like, I downloaded it on the PS4 because that's where I would probably want to play it. Mm -hmm. And then before I launched it, I was like, wait, is signing up for an account on this thing going to cause me problems down the road? 
Oh, sure. We're playing it on oh, other platforms. Wow. I then I then went on to find out that those player bases are all siloed. They are. There is no yeah. cross play in that game, so it doesn't matter. What if there was? In someday, that case, yeah. but yeah, what if there like, you know, playing Warframe at home on your PS4 and then playing the same account on your Switch yeah. out the house has some appeal. That would be cool. So, right. you know, we're seeing more and more of these games ported to Switch that really rely on an internet connection. Yeah. Um I'm I'm a firm believer that there will be some sort of Switch two some sort of like you know maybe like vision screen, whatever, yes. not not a new not new a new platform new switch xl <laughs> new switch do It'll you guys have another <laughs> stick on it but no games will ever use it it's going to have a third joy con that's really yeah. long that slides onto the top right uh do you guys think that there's a possibility that we see one with like 3g definitely or, or 4, 4g, 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 4G. Yeah. 5g this 5G. I mean, uh, yeah. they're starting, I, they're starting down that they're road getting yeah. there i don't yeah, know they're not there but yet. nintendo is so slow about adopting yeah. new tech that it would probably be 4G, but also they are so slow about adopting yeah. tech. The yes, the idea of an LTE switch sounds awesome, but I don't know that they think in those terms. I also, I, I don't think it would. In pr- I think it sounds neat. I don't, in practice, I don't think it would be all that cool. Um, I don't know. I use my switch on the go a lot more than it sounds like you guys do. But and like I, the if latency it had... involved, like you know, like the the reality of actually playing a live multiplayer game. Yeah, like Fortnite that, or Warframe or anything that's got like real smash genuine movement. Anything that's like it, you're just not. I don't know. Gonna Fortnite on my phone runs okay. Runs okay. Yeah, yeah. no, like I mean, like it's 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 surprisingly like competent. I think we're getting to the place with with that sort of stuff where it's it's not going to be the preferred method by far. But I mean, if you're buying it on Switch, you're not buying it because it's the preferred method. If if the Switch had better persistent online features, I'd totally be with you. But but. As it stands, there's literally one thing to do online with a Switch, and it's play games. Yeah, and like that's not always. Yeah, you're right. There's no Netflix. There's yeah, no, like if yeah. or or just even better social features and stuff. Like if the stuff like a Meverse, you know, like stuff that would be fun to do on a Switch. You want a uh, near. You want near. You want the yes. Vita's built-in yes. killer app. Dude, I want a street pass. Near. I want internet-enabled street passing. Uh, what was the What was the drawing thing on DS called? Picto Chat. Picto Chat. Oh my God, I forgot about Picto Chat. Yeah. Dude, where is all that stuff? Yeah. What did? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> no one used it. They, <laughs> I used it. I used it in McDonald's once. Wow. Picto were, Chat was fun at press conferences for video game companies <laughs> with a bunch of <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, there was a brief nerdy video there. game <laughs> writers had their DSs with them. Yeah. <laughs> um Yeah, okay. I guess, I guess yeah. I, I could see it. But also then the other aspect of that is where data caps are at these days on phones. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, they'd have uh, to they'd probably partner with a mobile company. Like it, there's a bunch of weird thirty business stuff. Yeah. That, yeah. They might not want to. Oh yeah, with. let's get Comcast involved right. in the switch, or just yeah. you know, like the 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 uh, 3G Vita only worked on AT and T, right? Right. Like yeah. You had to even if you weren't on AT and T, you had to go get an account with them to use your yeah. Vita. Huh. Uh, you could, yeah. I mean, and with where we're at, I, I, things have changed a lot since then in terms of just like how mobile plans are built, right? That's true. So if I, I've got my plan with unlimited data on my phone, and then adding my iPad to that is twenty bucks a month, right? So, and there's and there's even stuff like Google Fi out there. Like if, if right. Nintendo were to act willing to act as the middleman, where they're like, "Hey, just pay it." Like this is part of your online service fee. Oh sure. And sure. you can use it on various cell networks. Like that might be cool. I but... would rather just activate it as part of my existing. I would rather yeah. be able to take a switch into the fucking Verizon store and yeah. say, "Add this to my account." The same way this iPad is, uh, and be done with it. Yeah. Uh, that, also, that would be the only. But also, I I would not. Well, me personally, I would never pay twenty dollars a month just to have an online switch. Yeah. Also, you could always just tether your switch to your phone. Yeah, like that yeah. stuff works surprisingly well. Yeah, you just really have to play. I don't know. <laughs> what is your poison? What Fort, online Fort, game do you Fort, have to play all the time on the Switch? Fortnite. Fortnite. Mm. Tennis. Arms. Tennis. Are you playing a lot of tennis? Yeah. Eh. I keep thinking about buying tennis, but I feel like the, the public narrative on tennis has turned. It's kind of yeah. It's kind of slowed real down. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, it'll pick back up when people have to pay to play it. Don't worry <laughs> about there it. You go. <laughs> then people will be psyched all over again. Uh, I wish the Switch Online was better. Uh, not much else happening in the news this week. I, Jason, I put this in here for you. What you got? They announced a date for Monster Hunter World oh, on PC. It's so soon. It's soon. Yeah. It's less than a month. Less August, than a month. August like, 9th. Talking like 29, 30 days from now. Yeah. Uh, Monster Hunter World on Steam. Yeah, it was going to be like the end of the month or something like that. They they had shot for you know the fall, but I think I saw like a release date of like August twenty eighth or something like that floating around. Anyway, 
August 9th, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> that's soon. Uh, there's no connectivity whatsoever with the console versions from what I can tell. No, no. Uh, no crossplay. No, no but not also, over. Yeah, like, man, yeah. it'd be cool if you could bring your character over. Yeah, it would. And yeah, I mean, they've done that, you know, before, you know, where you have like an export tool and you can import it into yeah. you know, like an, another game. Also Street Fighter Five, like super integrated. Yeah. With yeah. the PC. Mm -hmm. um, like Capcom has done that stuff before. Uh, yeah, the, the specs yeah. look a little weird. Like the re recommended, it looks like the target is like uh, thirty frames yeah, per second. Yeah, that weirded people out. All, that led a lot of people to think that it was locked at thirty frames per second, I'm which sure. I don't think is the case. Yeah, I'm sure it goes. But, higher but than the that. specs do say like, hey, to hit thirty FPS at 1080p, here's what you need. Yeah, I don't have that series video card. Uh, it's a yeah, it's 1060. a GeForce 1060 to get thirty FPS at 1080p. <laughs> so this thing is going to be pretty demanding. That's. Uh, from the sound of it. I'm also a little afraid of uh, the DRM. They're yeah, it sounds like it's there. got Denuvo as well. Um, so, And that's been kind of hit or miss. You know, they've got a shady past. It's caused performance issues with yeah. other games. Uh, but it's also ran fine in, in others. So it's, it's you tough to You were saying say. the last Assassin's Creed, it was a big deal, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rory. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you hate <laughs> Talk about Rory about the CPU usage in Assassin's Creed Origins sometimes. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. He so will we'll, give you an earful. We'll see how much of an impact it yeah, has. Yeah, I guess, I guess... But maybe brace yourself for this pork to be. We'll see. A monster? Who knows? Oh, I feel like Capcom's PC stuff as of late has been mostly okay, though. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah totally it, nice. it may oh. very well be totally fine. Yeah. You know, I hope so. Street Fighter V had a root kit in it. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A glorious yeah. time. <laughs> that's true. Oh, Remember boy. when? Yeah. yeah. So I. It, but if, if you could just bring your character over. Shit, that'd be great. But would you play it? How much of it would you play? Would you probably play less of it because you'd be bringing in your high level character and you've already done all that other content? Maybe like, how less. much are you playing it now? I might re oh, not much because I'm waiting yeah. for the PC port. But... So if it came out on PC and you could just bring your character in, you'd be like, "Well, I've already seen all of it on you know, in, or with this character." Right. There's still reason for me to play. Yeah. Right. Okay. And I've been kind of holding off because I'm waiting for the PC all port. Right. I, I would totally, yeah, yeah. still keep playing what regularly. You just bring There's your palico still... in. Yeah, just the palico. Just the palico. No, because I, I feel like yeah, like I, I would bring my character in if I could, mm -hmm. but I probably would also start fresh. Yeah, I'm ready to re-roll. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I have no problem playing more of that game. What weapon are you gonna use? Uh, all of them. All of them. Damn, this time. At the same time. That's a too many. You only have two hands. You download that's Cheat true. Engine, man. You just like you got fucking a. a. Sword that's a gun that's a knife. Does Denuvo protect against Blames. shit like that? Not really. Ah, uh, you know. So. But it, with it being Swords an online game, yeah, that that is the thing that makes it. It's just copy something protection. you probably like, don't want to do. Anti cheat or anything. I no, Denuvo is so. not anti cheat. Yeah. Okay, I'm just I'm trying to think. Hell like, yeah, I can cheat all I want. Well, who who or what? Who would you be cheating though? Like, there's next to no PvP yourself. in that game, right? You'd be cheating. So it's yourself. not like you're, you're not going to like break you any could, economy or anything. No, if you you're were able to start if, hacking if you your get weapons. Into a room with somebody, you know. I mean, there's lots of shit that you can do. I remember in PSO, you know, people would get into your room and just completely fuck your inventory, corrupt your character, shit uh -huh. like that. There's, oh, there's uh -huh. lots of that. Yeah. Yikes! <laughs> you could crash. It was, it was you. you. You could yep. crash a lobby. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, you you would use the code that would let you cast spells in the lobby. Mm -hmm. So it was like you basically, oh, you, know, you, you were not that. able, mm -hmm. and you would start using Star Mist or something like that, and eventually, I think it would crash the entire fucking block. <laughs> Wouldn't doubt it. Uh, I did that yeah. once. <laughs> that was you. If nobody's going to make a game with the savagery of Ultima Online in these days, people are just <laughs> going to create it themselves. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I mean, so it's I, rust, I right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the cheating, what, what the... Cause, can you play offline in Mon? You can. Yeah, yeah, totally. So that means there's a locally stored save. Yep. Then all bets are off. Yeah, exactly. That's. Uh, I wonder. But with Denuvo, you've got to like be online like every three days or something like that. I yeah, but that's. Works. But I bet you can still get into an offline game of Monster Hunter while still being connected to the internet, right? Yeah. So uh, that would basically short circuit any kind of server side checks, unless right, unless they're checking your character compared to the last time they saw it and going like, oh, there's actually no way, you know, if you're being dumb about it and you're like, give me all the event outfits that haven't rolled out on PC yet. Right. They you know look like there. Ryu. Yep. It's definitely in there somewhere. Yeah, they're not going to have all that stuff right away. Yeah, it's also yeah. got a oh. different event schedule from the console versions, which is just kind of weird. Hmm. Events? Uh, no, they well, they're scratch. starting a player base yeah, from yeah. scratch. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. 
So that, that yeah, it, like, a bunch of the the events will line up, but it's probably the quest, some of the quests. Event, like the yeah, event quests. event quest schedule will differ, is what this says. Okay. There so. were a lot of cheats for Metal Gear Survive. Oh yeah. Despite it being largely online, online uh, there wasn't really a competitive aspect right. to it, and so there was no checking in most on in the online mm -hmm. so you would encounter people that were just like had unbreakable weapons and were moving faster than you should be able to move and oh so they made the game good uh better. Honest, honestly better the <laughs> cheats made the game way more palatable because mm -hmm. it was a fucking man boring man remember that game metal gear survive remember that came that game out this year exists what the fuck right dirty water what the dirtiest it's... fucking water man uh yeah, but then people started going like, oh, what about all the pre-order armor that they only gave out in Japan that's the fucking Cyber Ninja from MGS1? Wait, hmm. what? What if, what if I had that? They got the Ninja? Yeah. Man. We didn't get the Ninja? I don't know if they ever rolled it out in a different way for the US or not, because at some point, I stopped paying attention to Metal Gear Survive! Yeah. It's that Ninja. <laughs> all right. Hey, thanks for putting in that middle, or the yeah. uh, Monster Hunter news I, for I figured you'd have something to say about that. I will play some more of that game. I, I would like to see it. I don't yeah. know if I have it in me to like start a character and play a ton yeah, of it. But I, I would like, like to look a, at it on a It's PC. a good looking game and I would love to see it. Yeah, like super nice. I wonder if the frame rate is fully uncapped. <laughs> oh my God. We'll find out soon. 165 hertz, Monster oh, Hunter. Man, you, you, you and your refresh rates, Rory and his ultra wide screen. Re I'll take refresh rates fucking, over ultra wide. Fucking display fucking elitists around here. a week, man. We got the monitor aristocracy here. <laughs> Uh, all right. Emails. Email. Let's read some. Oh. Bombcast at giantbomb.com is the address. Send them there. Uh, Hook them emails. Here's an email from Chris. Hi. With Bioware taking a step away from romances, uh, let's reminisce about the ones they've done for the last 20 years. Which characters did you romance in their games? Which were the best? Love, unhappily married to Liara for all three Mass Effects. <laughs> <laughs> I have to look up his name. The fish guy. The fish, fish guy. Fish guy in Mass Effect. Thane? Thane? Oh, Thane. Thane. He's like a reptile dude. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. You got to see a nude Thane? I mean, I I didn't, but my shepherd did. Okay. Well, I didn't. I don't think I realized he was romanceable. I, I won't. I think so. That's, that's tragic. Cause Maybe that was just a dream. Did, did Hold you on. just write more fan fiction <laughs> yeah, then? Yeah. Is that, no, that's that's tragic because then he dies, and he's he's yeah, like he's he's exactly. terminally he's terminally ill in three. Exactly, oh, man. man. That's terrible. I think I. Hey, sick people should be able to love. I know it's a, it's a bold just, stance. It's a tragic loss is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um. I don't romance and tell. <laughs> That's fair. I don't remember. I think in Mass Effect, I got with the racist space lady in the yeah. first one. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Huh. I don't remember. See, I didn't. I didn't make that mistake until the third one. Which, at which point, I feel like she had partially repented. Mm. Yeah. I think I. I think I went. I think I went Liara, then Miranda, then Ashley, which is an embarrassing trajectory. I was gonna say, wasn't she more racist in Mass Effect oh, Two? I, I could have sworn she was sort of contrite about it by mm. then, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I got it on with the I liked, tattoo lady. I liked stirring yeah, up drama. Jack. What yeah. it? What it? Well, I liked stirring up drama by never romancing the same person twice. Smart. That's why. Nice. That's a good idea. Yeah. Who is the guy with the headaches in the first one? I did not romance him because God, what a whiner. Headaches? Yeah. He had the psychic power. Are you talking about Caden? Yeah. Yeah, like that it guy. was the Caden Ashley choice, right? Screw that guy. Yeah. I didn't. I, I threw Caden to the wolves. Oh, yeah. Good. Who is the lady with the hood? And Despite like the Ashley mask? being horrible. Tolly? Tolly. Yeah. Tolly. Tolly. Tolly was ah, my girl. Oh, that well. was my girl. I just gave it away. Sorry, mm. Tolly. Got him. She and I are a thing. They gave out, there was a statement like shortly after E3 or maybe in the wake of yeah. uh, the ending of E3. Oh, where they the were like, oh, maybe we'll yeah. do romances. Yeah. Which it I, was it was so wishy-washy, though. It really bummed me out. It well, was just like yeah. this real like... But it bummed me out even more because they didn't even capitulate to the people that were mad. It was more of this wishy-washy like, eh, who knows what relationships you'll form in the DLC or something. Like, right. Like they didn't even... Does that mean, it. okay, if, if they put out Anthem and it doesn't have any romancing or anything like that, like fine, I, I don't really need it. Which it won't. Uh, I mean, they said it won't. So, yeah, yeah, so if... But if they're saying like... Hey, and then if you want it, we're gonna put out the fuck DLC. <laughs> is there a way to only get, get that? To see it. Is there a way I can only download the fuck DLC? Uh, yeah, you have to go to the, their download. website and patch it over the top oh. of the non fuck DLC. Okay. Uh, and then you blow up the plastic doll and attach the VR <laughs> thing to the head of the doll. Yeah. 
and it's then a hell of a collection of whatever you want to do after that. Uh, fuck it. Great. Okay. <laughs> it turns out that's, that's the one the thing one, we built. We have a we have okay, a DLC so. for you. <laughs> that would be hilarious to me if they literally sold a thing that was just, like, just like here you go. Here's the here's the action yep. you've been it's looking the, for. Like what a what a pleasure planet. What, yeah. a, what a shitty way to like further commodify this thing that is supposed to make people feel something genuine about the game. Right. But it's it, but it's so and about life. I've never looked at romance the same since uh, Saints Row Three. Yeah, they <laughs> that, did it like, best. They they broke it out in Wait, such did, a way. What did Three have? You they hit a button, get and you right fucked. into it at the beginning of the game. Oh, that was four, wasn't it? No, on the spaceship. Yes, I guess yeah. you're yeah. right. It okay, was okay, yes, was yes. The, the stuff on the stuff with yes. Kinsey or whatever on, on Fin Four was amazing. Yes, their fucking. <sighs> I remember Saints very Row. deep commentary on romance <laughs> in Mass Effect games was. It was enough to break actual Mass yeah. Effect stuff for me. I think Saints Row Four is underrated. I think it's yeah. just I you know was, I, I well, or three, I think I, let's say I think it was better than it should have been for how it started. Yes, for yeah. how it came about. Yeah. yeah, like being an expansion that got turned into a full game. Four is a lot of fun. It was, yeah. uh, but it, it's definitely built on the back of three. And it had some. It had some good moments. Uh, um. Yeah, I don't know. I I think like the. I, I feel this way about a lot of like things that feel very mechanical in games. Like we're 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 getting to a point where we're a generation ahead, about to be two. You know, like the, they're already talking about the one after that. Uh, and I feel like a lot of the things that maybe got a pass in earlier eras in the the 360 PS3 era in terms of like how mechanical all that romance really was yeah. and. You know, and and just the, the how mechanical the emotional moments of video games were in that era, and some still are. I mean, that David Cage game just came out; he's still <laughs> at it. Uh, but you know, a lot of people gave those games a pass in the previous generation because it was all new is not the right word because it's not. Uh, but mm. new in a it, I, the, in a mainstream, mainstream sense, new, yeah. there were definitely plenty of games RPGs yeah, yeah. before that. Bioware made a lot of them. Sure, uh, that you know, and featured that type of character interaction. I mean, I hadn't played all the Bioware games, but it was at least new to me and how like robust it was. Sure. Like and how many choices you had and yeah. how many different ways it could go. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah. But at the same time, like even though they didn't put little hearts next to the romance dialogue options, like it was super obvious when you right. were saying something that was steering the path of totally. your romance. Yeah. Like, and, and I feel like that's the, like I, that stuff needs to evolve now because yeah. now it, like I think people have done it and been through it enough times in enough of these games that it is as as wooden as as it always has been, and you see the trick, you see the gears turning, you yeah. you see all that shit, and so it has to move forward, and that's why like when mm -hmm. people were like, I can't believe Anthem's not gonna have any romances, I'm like, dude, Fine. I don't want them to do it. Yeah. It's just gonna be that again. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't care. Uh, it's just not vital to my enjoyment of that style of game especially so, maybe somewhat yeah. ironically if you cut through all the controversy of the arena stuff arena net stuff like that's exactly what she was talking about yeah. in the initial thread was the difficulty of of writing uh around stuff like this for sure yeah and and so i, I think that you know someone has to push that stuff forward and maybe someone's out there doing it in you know in a smaller game that i haven't uh, seen the but... fire emblem games are pretty good about it because it's like it, it incorporates gameplay where if you fight next to somebody you build that you, yeah you build that's that always been that's up, always been then like a can, cool like, have idea kids with them. And then yeah. those games also have to account for almost anybody potentially being dead right? yeah yeah yeah. but like there's there's that but that's still like a, a very mechanical thing like the numbers go up if yeah. you fight next to the person you're fucking like which honestly very true to life yeah I'm talking, I've seen Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Yeah, that's exactly how it works. I want to see the other end of it get better. The yeah. actual like emotional end the of sexy. it. You know, the, the yeah. I want to see I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see him. I want to feel it. I don't know. Did you play Mass Effect Andromeda? <laughs> I did. You saw Wait, do you see it in Andromeda? Those <laughs> you see something. Let's Wait, just say those you, models clip through you there each other. That we watched enough. a couple of them on no. UPF one week. Oh, that was before you started last year. Oh yeah, year. and I felt dirty afterwards. Those you yeah. should you should YouTube those. Right, I'll check those out. YouTube the romance scenes from Andromeda. They I'm gonna work my way through the series. They are explicit in a way that the previous games were implicit. Because when I when I <laughs> fucked my really fish man, it was very <laughs> classy, like classy. And, yeah, and tame. it was like cinematic. You know, it was just oh. like you know, hey, the lights are gonna lower, and then there's a thing here, but it's not gonna. There's, there's like a, a little bit of fleeting nudity here and there, yeah. but no, like the 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 Andromeda scenes are real in your face. Maybe I should watch that Shape of Water movie. 
Now that I think about it. Yeah, yeah. probably. I mean, you know, that's going right to get, get your Thane stuff yeah. off again. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's like I just look at it and think that those systems need to evolve, and and I don't need to see them in that form again. Yeah, mm. sure. Uh, Martin from London, ten years on from PS3 trophies, do you still care? I didn't care then. Yeah, uh, I actually didn't really get at all into any of the trophy stuff. It always until... felt weird to me on the PS3 because it was incomplete. If that makes sense. Yeah, there, there were some whole, games that didn't have any. There's, yeah, there's yeah. this whole like first wave of right. PS3 games that didn't have them, yeah. and then you just kind of bolted it on. This uh, came up. I saw other people talking about it. This came up because we just passed the 10-year mark of them adding the trophies okay. to the PS3. Yeah. I care about I, them way more now than I did, did, did then, I'll say. I My wave, my, my arc on it was not caring about them at all on the PS3, and then when the PS4 came out, caring more about them, and now being mostly indifferent about them you don't care about your level no your trophy and, and level I, and i also really don't like the way that they expose the numbers uh or, or the way that the numbers they do choose to expose and the like the trophy platinum gold thing i always thought was really lame i like the rarity percent yeah that's, that's literally that's, that's, cool. literally yeah, that's the only great. thing i like about this that's, cool. uh, that's yeah, and same. achievements do that too yeah. uh and and that's that's new to this generation and i think that's that's vital it's really cool stuff to see um I still just like the big number, like uh, Xbox. Yeah. Has. I think that's yeah. a... Remember when somebody got one million? Yeah. I that watched was fucking that cool. live. Was it Stallion 83? Yeah. I think was who that was, right? Yeah, yeah, that was really cool. You're, you're right, since I've been spending a lot more time on the Xbox since the X came out. And, yeah. and you're right, just seeing that fat five to six digit number. Right. Uh, and it's, it's, it's weird to me, because I look at it and go like, oh, I used to care a lot more about that number. And I look at it and go... It's still way <laughs> higher than most of the people I know. Yeah, it's like a high score. It's a video yeah. game. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes. It's, 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 it's awesome. It's a, it's a perfect it's expression of like, that concept that's because it is just a high score. Why I like the 360 so much, especially at the beginning, because everything about it was really cool and also slightly cheesy. Yeah, in a kind of a ridiculous yeah, yeah. So, way, like the avatar, but, but in a really and, earnest way. Yeah, like gamer tag is such a dumb name, but they were so committed the to blades. it. Blades. Yeah, like mm. everything about that thing, like the dumb gamer pictures, like it was. The whole thing was slightly corny, but in a really earnest way. Yes. It was just easy to feel good about. I loved it. Simpler times. You know what uh, bugs me now is on the home screen of my Xbox One, they always show, like, the person that's 20 gamer score ahead of me. That's kind of an interesting idea, like the, the, the monthly rankings. <laughs> I, need, of, I don't course. need that negative shit in my life. The other, it doesn't have to be <laughs> negative, Jason. Celebrate that they have more time and ability to play video games than you. No, I just get mad that <laughs> I don't have that time the, the other weird thing about the one is the point inflation now that every game has a thousand like because yeah, some, some, oh, really? some games even have more than that well but everything everything has a minimum a thousand because right, yeah. on the 360 oh, downloadable games only had 200 and then they doubled it to 400 later on yeah. but that leads to a bunch of games that feel like they should not have a lot of achievements just giving you like 100 and 200 point achievements all, all over the place hell yeah yeah right uh <laughs> that feels okay yeah I don't. I don't actively go out and seek that stuff, though. Like, I, I, I'm not a completionist in in that respect. But if I'm close, yeah. Like, like if I complete the game and it's like, shit, there's only four more of these. If I you're close, get. or if they, if they have you doing interesting things that you wouldn't have thought to do otherwise, yeah. like that's cool. Uh, I think that's a still a valid use. There are some in Moss Hunter that are just like, damn, impossible. I, I've <laughs> stopped. Like, I I've, I've stopped get. looking at achievements and trophies yeah. as frequently as I as I did. Yeah, before, you know, even probably six months ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I look at them when I'm like looking for stuff to do. Like maybe yeah. I hit a lull in the game yeah. or something like that. I'll I'll poke in and, and say, oh, okay. yeah. If you right, if you I really could I could do that. You really like the game. Fun. I yeah, think I I'm, think... Just, I'm playing games across a lot of different platforms, yeah. and and so, you know, if I was all in on one platform or the other, then it'd be easy to say, well, here's where I care about achievements or trophies or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But because I'm distributed across four different mm. places yeah. and Steam achievements have never mattered and never will matter, uh, it's hard to care. Yeah. Yep. About any of it. I can see that. I don't give a fuck. I do think trophies have the, the trophy toasts are way better than the achievement ones at this mm. point. A yes. Nice, nice crisp sound. Though the thing pops out and then it doesn't stay too long. Yeah, I think the, 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 the achievement, achievement toasts. They feel uh, really antiquated at this point. But when you get a rare one, I'd fucking and hate it that. has the weird little that gem, sound little is, dangly noise. Yeah, but that sound is so loud. Oh. Like I've had it pop up where I, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, hear I couldn't hear characters talking over oh, it. Oh, nice. It's so loud. 
I think you might be able to adjust the volume of the system sounds separately from game audio. I might be wrong. Uh, let's see. A couple emails about game streaming, since that seems to be on everybody's mind recently. This one comes from Bernard Jones. Like, follow, and subscribe. Bernard Jones. Uh, Bernard name. In the most recent episode, uh, Jeff made an offhand comment about Amazon perhaps saying the Firecube can stream The Witcher 3 now, quote unquote. I've made this burner email account to tell you they're already kind of there. I've been streaming Rise of the Tomb Raider on a Fire TV for the last two months in a closed alpha. Buggy and laggy, but it works. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. Proof. Even they're Proof testing positive. that stuff. I'm sure everybody is testing that stuff in some capacity. Uh, Nathan from the UK wrote in about the GeForce Now streaming. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's, he asks, have any of you tried GeForce Now? It works surprisingly well, latency mm -hmm. and quality-wise. It's a roughly 3 gigahertz-ish uh, quad-core with a 1080-ish spec virtual machine that will run pretty much anything I have tried. Uh, it does struggle with Assassin's Creed Origin and Watch Dogs 2, however. Uh, it does have its own problems, like saving being temporary to your current VM instance. So if the game and stream crashes and you're dumped back to the launcher, you will lose that save. Really? You, need, you need to make sure you exit correctly so that Steam or Uplay sync with the cloud. Oh. Uh, however, action games are very playable with it. I'm currently halfway through Neo. It's a much better experience than PlayStation Now tested on a 300 megabit fiber connection in the UK. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I'll concur. Yeah. I, I oh, have you tried it? Well. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got my uh, NVIDIA tablet, um, the Shield, okay. um, and I'll stream stuff to that. And yeah, yeah it works surprisingly well. Um, that's the only time I've been like somewhat impressed with streaming technology. And that like, thing they charge you by the hour, right? Is it like you do you buy stream at credits the time, from at the GeForce? Time, no. Okay. Like that was a while ago. I, I didn't buy any credits or anything okay. like that. So it was a flat monthly. I remember monthly seeing that they were like, "Oh, years. if you want to buy CPU time, it's going to cost you this much and you're kind of buying some credit currency that then right. you spend on stream time or, or whatever it is." Yeah. Oh, is it I'm not, not sure if that's how it is. Is it not fully launched yet? I don't know. Looks not. Looks like not. I think you can get in there and do it if you want, but it you know might not There's be like some, something. Some kind they're... of beta waiting list for GeForce Now. Oh, okay. Anyway, yeah. uh, let's see. Devin from Nola. I'm asking something primarily for Jeff because we have similar tastes in sneakers. Are there any pairs of shoes you take extra care for every time you wear them? I started getting into limited run Nike Air Max and have been looking into preserving them more than my normal shoes. I'm curious if you ever keep shoes for special occasions or just rotate everything you have for appearances. Oh, I don't know. I, I just kind of wear what I wear. Uh, but there's definitely some stuff that I'd wear less frequently because they're nicer or rarer or something like that. It's like, ah, I'm going to get out the good shoes for this. Uh, Your Uggs. Yeah, my Uggs. Or like when I wear wore those chrome Nikes to Dave Snyder's wedding. Because mm. I was like, I got to get the nice shoes out for this. <laughs> sure. Uh yeah, I don't know. It's, it's not gotta, something... Gotta wear those things on the farm. Right. Uh, but also, I think there's something to... There's a different type of extravagance that comes with getting the rare shoes and wearing them into the fucking ground. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, and, and, like, I don't... You know, people like to dead stock their shoes and, like, I'm not gonna wear these at all. I'm not gonna hide them away in a closet and sell them someday and blah, blah, blah. Um, I have definitely gotten very limited edition signed action figures from developers and just opened them <laughs> and played yeah. with them before. Yeah. It's like, ah. I kept my signed John Carmack Dreamcast lid nice. nice. Uh, was it just a lid, not the whole Dreamcast? It was just, I mean, it, it was a full Dreamcast, okay. but I took the lid off because I needed that Dreamcast for something else. I see. <laughs> uh, and so I kept the lid separate. And so I'll, you know, I'll marry it back to a Dreamcast someday. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. I worked at a coffee shop where my coworker would often cover her feet in trash bags to protect her shoes. What? But then again, maybe you shouldn't wear expensive yeah. Jordans don't if wear, you work at a coffee yeah. shop. Coffee is going to get everywhere. Yep. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Just don't yeah. do that. I'm really close to spending. Uh, I'm really close to paying over retail for a pair of shoes. Uh, Which ones are we talking about? This does, uh, this, and I, it sucks because I fucking, I do not like Travis Scott. But those Cactus Jack Jordan fucking fours look real good. I'm and, not, and that's my favorite, probably all time shoe is, mm -hmm. is the four, and mm -hmm. I like the way they look a lot. I've thought about switching it up and getting into sneakers, but it's a it's a dangerous, dangerous. Just don't, just don't do it. It's not. 
<laughs> wear what you like. Oh, at the end of the day, wear what you like. And if you happen to like stuff that ends up being slightly more expensive, you know, stay within reason. Don't be a nutcase. What are those shoes that look like they have Tide Pods on the bottom of them? It's like Air Bound. They're the, Nikes. Yeah. Are those those the um? There's the two seventies that have the just the full like they look like a pair of lips almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's another set of Nikes that look like they have like a little jelly stuff on the bottom. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, but mm-hmm. I, I don't remember exactly. Yeah, slightly tempted. Mm-hmm. I heard they're very comfy. Mm-hmm. You don't want to talk about comfy shoes? I know some comfy shoes. I also bought a pair of sandals the other week. It's great. I need sandals. All right, any rights in? Why are there no good monster truck games after enjoying the monster truck events in the crew Two, flipping trucks off half pipes is cool as hell. Mm. I noticed monster jam was on sale for the 360 and downloaded it. It's absolutely atrocious. Are there any good monster truck games out there? Probably not. I don't know. I would recommend one Ivan Iron Man Stewart super off road. Okay. Those aren't monster trucks. Oh, come on. They're, they're just are, big trucks. They're, they're just big enough. Are you running over cars? No. no. It's no, just an you're... off-road truck. Oh, it's not a monster truck game. It's so awesome, though. It is really awesome. You're right. Uh, <laughs> no, I, you know, th- those are always licensed games. The Monster Jam games were licensed games, so you know they were made as cheaply as possible to try to sell to suckers who <laughs> like monster trucks. <laughs> uh, I can't think of any. Nope. Wasn't there... Um, Excite truck. That uh, I think those, that are... Was, those are big sixteen wheelers, or eight. Yeah. yeah, those are like big cab trucks. No, Excite truck's not about big rigs. Yes, there's yeah. totally a game called Excite truck. Yeah. Right for the Wii. Isn't it yeah. About yeah, it was a long, aren't they big trucks? Game. They're not like monster trucks. That's right. That was totally a launch game. What kind of trucks are they, Brad? I don't know. Those are big you wheeled. Googled it. They look like trucks. Big wheeled d- trucks. Apparently, I'm not an authority on what constitutes a monster truck. Do they have gigantic, fucking comically sized tires on them? Yeah. I don't know. Does that. Th- yes? Kind of? No. Okay. That's just a truck. They have fire yeah. coming out of the back, though. Okay. Well, that's still pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say that's not cool. And then what was the. Was it Excite Bots? Was that the one with the fucking bug cars or something? Mm. I don't bots. know. Oh, yeah. Excite Bots, trick racing. Okay. Trick racing. They just couldn't be bothered to make an, a sequel to Excite Bike. Right. They had to like they had to try to turn it into this nightmare. Like, Actually, Excite Truck it. was all right, if which, I remember right. Which would you mm-hmm. rather have, a new Excite game or a new Pilot Wings? A new Excite, Excite, Excite. game. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, I fucking love Pilot also, Wings. Also, yeah, but they've made a bunch of them. Yeah. There's yeah. only one Excite Bike. They made two. Did they? Right? Yeah. Just Pilot Wings is? There's I don't know. There's DS several. Game. Oh, there's several three. Pilot Wings. I want to say three. Super NES, N64, 3DS. Yeah. I think no, that might be 3DS one. There's got to be at least one other what one. I'm forgetting. Right? No, I, I think that's... I just want like a new... I want a game that's like the crew where you're on, let's say, an island. Okay. Maybe some sort of th- island. Like a woohoo island. Oh, okay. For example, just a woohoo out island. Of, out of my brain. And you can go between different vehicles and there's different activities to do. But it's like, it's not races. It's not the crew two. I want a game that's like the crew two, but it's not the crew two. What if it was just cause four? That's an island. You can kind of drive vehicles. You can kind of do stuff. They're yeah. not, it's not necessarily races. There are probably going to be races there's in just probably cause four. Be races. But it's not the crux tornado, of that game. Tornado racing. Tornado racing. That's the name of my oh, game. Oh, like tornado, tornado shot racing. put? Yeah. You, like as a mini game? Oh, like throwing a sh- like like you have to throw something use your into grappling the hook to yeah. fling yeah. something into the tornado and, and then see how when far it you fl- can get when it. it flings out. I hope that tornado's good. All right, next email is from Birch in Arkansas. I was recently reminded of the first time I played Final Fantasy VI, which was with a sideloaded ROM running on an Android tablet using a PS4 controller. Ah, the original. <laughs> And it got me wondering what the most convoluted setups you guys have ever used to play a game are. Just anything in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a lot of stretching cables and balancing things in there. Yeah, totally. Uh, I installed Doom to my digital camera. Yeah, I've done that as well. Okay, yeah, that, I play, those old okay. Kodaks. Yeah, okay. those real old Kodak. I played Doom on a TI-83. Mm. Same. Okay. I just saw a forum thread yesterday. Uh from somebody who is porting Quake to iOS and TVOS. Mm, cool. 
I, uh, you know, enough. there are cases where you're emulating an emulator yep. Whoa. Uh, and stuff like that, what? where you're emulating a platform and then running an emulator, like, like, let's say, for example, you're emulating a Dreamcast and loading up that Sega Smash Pack that oh, is a Genesis emulator sure. and, you know, huh. and yeah. seeing how far down that rabbit hole you can get. Ooh, maybe we should make a thing out of that. <laughs> hmm. How many layers of emulation could you load up? Right. I wonder. You can emulate a PS3 and then run retro, the PS3 version of RetroArch probably on that emulated PS3 and then emulate a PS1. Totally. Mm. I think the most convoluted thing I ever set up was playing uh, <clears throat> net play for Super Smash Bros. Melee on a PC with a with the full on uh, with the so you have to you know get like all of these clients involved yeah. you, and then, then you need the GameCube controller converter. Yep. For PC, that, mm -hmm. that's probably my. Yeah, there was definitely like the the one of the most convoluted things I think I've ever done is set up. We talked about last week on the on the after show. I think setting up Xlink Kai yeah. to play PSP games over the internet. Yeah, I would do that with Monster Hunter. I was doing that with Twisted, the first Twisted Metal that came out, because there was no well, not that I would have. There was there was, no, there was no Monster Hunter on the PSP when I was doing that. I still got that like uh, little antenna thing that came with it. Mm. Was it, yeah, USB dongle and then had a little antenna that I'd put it on my PC tower. <laughs> I, ne cute. I never got around to trying it, but I was always fascinated with the people who were spoofing street passes yeah. with, with yeah, weird yeah. specific Wi-Fi equipment. Right. I forget exactly how that stuff worked, but... I think it's just, you know, the same way you can flash a firmware on a router to put tomato on it or, or whatever else. Right. You could probably just turn it into a... And I, I want to say they were getting, like, unique street passes that yeah. way. Because like, other users would have to do it, too. You would all... It was like basically you were building a land tunnel the same way I was you doing Twisted Metal on the PSP. Okay. But you were all kind of connecting to that LAN right. in a way okay. that made it so you saw everyone else's shit. Man, super cool. And totally pointless. <laughs> yep. Uh, Josh from the UK. Uh, I know it's an overused comparison these days, but is Fallout 76 becoming the new No Man's Sky of game marketing? Uh, there seem to be grand promises that then get chipped away at with uh, other drip-fed details like PvP being optional, uh, but it seems like there isn't a hard toggle of PvP active or not. I feel like they need to put out a one or two hour video of gameplay just so I can understand exactly how things are going to actually work. I used to think of Bethesda as a great marketer, but that was probably easy following games like Oblivion and Fallout 3. I want to see how this game works. I had, I like. I have a fairly clear yeah, idea. Yeah, I, I thought I thought that e3 presentation was like that q a format they came up with was like pretty good there yeah. were still a lot of people after with that I, I, that were not clear on some basic concepts there were a couple of details game. like 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 there's no npc yeah right. that was yeah. the big one i saw going around where people thought it was just a fallout game that could be played online and then they were like wait a minute well because they no... said you know we've got this big story right but then it turns out there's just a couple robots in there that will send you on a quest and that's it yeah but maybe that maybe the robots talk for a long time. That's the big story. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, I yeah. I think Bethesda has been good about saying what its games are, but this is unlike anything they have made. So yeah. I think they're probably trying to figure out what's the best way to talk about this thing. Sure. And too. they had a weird thing where they had an immediate pushback before they in the, even announced right. the game. Yeah. Yeah. Which That's... you know people complaining like, oh, it's just going to be rushed. Oh yeah. 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 Before they even had that press conference. Right. So they had to approach it from a very interesting angle like, of like knowing the reception. The stuff they were tweeting about it during E3, if you looked at the comments, like just immediately people were just like raging about it not being a single player RPG. Like, so, yeah. I'm yeah. not looking forward to that game, especially much from the way they've talked about it, but I don't think that it's N No Man's Sky esque. No, like, they're I, not yeah. saying that it's going to be this grand thing and have these things. Because I feel like. The, the ultimately the No Man's Sky problem is they talked about a bunch of stuff that they're going to have and people believed it all and then it came out and didn't really have that thing. Whereas yeah. this is like they're talking about what their game's going to have and people are questioning it and then they're kind of half backpedaling and half damage like controlling. Clarifying like, a little bit. Like here's what this actually means. Yeah. And they're like, oh, that's less interesting than the thing I had cooked up in my head. Yeah. Uh, whereas No Man's Sky was a little more, I feel like it was a little more obfuscated in terms of like they were very coy about what the game was like oh who, who we'll see it's a mystery like that i think is the the problem with no man's sky is they wanted to keep it vague 
to preserve mystery is is the the impression I got. And not not couple, out of any sort of like malicious. Yeah. Or like it was their idea to do something that way. Right. And it yeah. And work. it just didn't work out. So you know, uh, I don't know. I'm curious to see some of that game for myself. Um, and I think the people that are like, "Why I can't believe this isn't a single player game." I don't know. I guess maybe I'm not in the majority on this one, but like, I don't want another fucking single player fallout game anytime soon. Mm. Did you play fallout four? I did. Uh, Let me tell you, I don't want another fucking one of those. See, I, I, I do. <laughs> what if they took a long time and made it better? Yeah, sure. The idea that this game's coming out this soon and people are like, oh, I wanted it to be a single. It's like, dude, no. Yeah. Well, when you get into the territory of people thinking like, oh, wait, has Obsidian been making this game? You know, like, right. Like right, if right. it was some other studio uh, yeah, had when, been working when, on it for a long time. Start, yeah. Because, you know, yeah. People wanting it to be like the next coming of New Vegas and all this right. other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'd, I hadn't seen the tweet from Obsidian until a couple of days ago. That was like them saying, basically just saying like, it's not us. <laughs> like they didn't say what and how bad they were referring to, but it was like very much like them going like, we are not making that fucking Fallout game that you're hearing about. Yeah. <laughs> Leave us out of that mess. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie from Highland, Michigan. With the recent release of Luminous Remastered, I was trying to think of a way to explain it to a friend who had never played it. And trying to do so, I managed to create the phrase colored blockchain and I could not stop laughing. What if attempting to line things up is just a metaphor for mining while clearing a square is like getting a coin and the intermittent skin swaps represent the change to a new currency? Would your opinion on crypto mining change if it meant that all their rigs were using so much power just so the machine can compute to an endless loop of shining? Uh, see, I was, I was hearing that and thinking that you've made like five Steam clone games that are Luminous ripoffs but have that are the blockchain mining? mapped onto are, it. Uh, like not even real mining, oh, okay. just like... The same way there's like Bitcoin clicker and Bitcoin party, you know, like whatever the fuck else, like Bitcoin luminous where the sounds and the aesthetics have just been replaced by clip art of a fucking <laughs> coin. <laughs> this got me thinking about what would happen if Mizuguchi made his own cryptocurrency. Nah. It's pot coin. <laughs> Next question. Okay. It already exists. All right. Dennis Rodman Big, uh, is, all, is on board. Fair enough. No, I don't know. Uh, yeah. uh, let's see. Jerry from Wisconsin. Uh, with Capcom's recent shutdown of Puzzle Fighter on mobile, I was wondering what it would take to get them to release a brand new real deal Puzzle Fighter game, huh. not completely rotten with microtransactions. Fund it yourself, develop yeah. it completely, and then say, hey, would you like to publish this? If not, I'm just going to put it out on the internet for free. Yeah. Just, I mean, the I'll odds of done. them doing a full-fledged yeah. pu puzzle fighter after their iPhone one failed is. Yeah. I, he, he does say, I can't imagine making no. a puzzle fighter game would be incredibly costly. Maybe a change of scenery from street fighter could be enough to create a new line of puzzle something games. Think about a monster hunter puzzler where you collect and match exotic materials to do damage, or maybe a resident evil attache case fighter. Where you're combining herbs and moving around and matching guns to do maximum damage. First of all, all video games are very expensive. <laughs> yeah. So when you say, sure. like, I don't think it would be costly to do this thing. It's like, yeah, maybe in the grand scheme of things, yeah, it's going to be less expensive than Fallout 76. I uh, am I am way into the idea of the Resident Evil inventory yeah, puzzle. I like that. In case thing that becoming a puzzle game. Like you the get thing a feels red, like, yellow, and green herb is like, like a super drop. Practically a puzzle game already. Huh. <laughs> that would be neat. I would be super into that. Uh, to answer the question, though, no, that'll never happen. <laughs> I, I I feel like they will eventually release a puzzle fighter thing. You think? But yeah. not anytime soon. It'd be a nice goodwill thing. I think if if they didn't make it free to play, you know, if it is just a standalone, I think if, game. if they did it, it would be here's an arcade collection. Uh, here's a you know, oh, yeah, hey, yeah, we're yeah. releasing emulated. You yeah. know, it's it. I, don't a make brand it, new puzzle fighter. No, make I, them look like the old ones, not the iPhone. Yeah, ones. It, it's. Yeah. I'm still sort of annoyed that they didn't do a great job with that 360 re-release, that XBLA. They didn't. Yeah, it, I mean, it was okay, oh, no. but they didn't redo any of the art, so it looked sure. very dated and oh, just kind of yeah. grungy. Like it was how, not. That's it was, how I want my puzzle. It was not. It was not a good yeah. archival version of that huh. game. Let's say. Uh, yeah, like I would probably still take like the Saturn version over that 360 version. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of holding out for that. Uh, what's it called? Crystal Crisis that Nicalis is making, which 
basically looks like oh, Puzzle right. Fighter. Yeah. Except with like Finding of Isaac and Astro Boy characters instead. What? Another hot crossover. You hear about right. this? No. Oh, yeah. They announced it a few weeks ago. Let's oh, see. Oh, jeez. Uh, That's char- like characters four from crossover games today. Characters from Cave Story, Code Princess, 1001 Spikes, Astro Boy. Yeah, they must have. Uh, Nicalis is doing this? Yes. Yeah. I want to say that they're this fall? doing the Blade Strangers thing. It looks, it looks a whole lot like Puzzle Fighter. Astro Boy. I hope, I hope that's good. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, also, in the meantime, you can download Money Puzzle Exchange for the Switch. Not the yeah. same game, but yeah, not the same game, but still good. Still a good puzzle game. I think it's on. It's on every. It's on PS4 and stuff also. We get it for Switch. But there's no trophies. <laughs> yeah. But there's a local co-op anywhere. Oh man, I started you playing. Busted out right now. I started playing some more Luminous on the Switch and started seeing some of that slowdown you were talking about. Yeah. Oh no. Just like, ah, yeah. it doesn't ruin the game, but it kind of ruins the game. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Stuart and Dallas. <clears throat> I wouldn't want to play Money Puzzle Exchanger with that analog stick. Eh. Like, uh-huh. you could. You certainly could. But I would spend the whole time thinking about, like, man, I, I've got... I'm in possession of four better ways <sighs> to play this game. <laughs> so that goes against the spirit of every worker. <laughs> I'm more of a debt miser. <laughs> I still keep thinking about doing that D-pad mod on the Joy-Con, hmm. but oh, yeah. apparently it's not it's not trivial to do. Uh, Stuart and Dallas, we'll just buy you a box of left Joy Cons okay. and let you destroy them until you get it right. Ah, you know. <laughs> Got a pretty good track record. I'd give it a shot. Uh, where have all the triple A horror games gone? Time was you had several options competing for your video game dollar, with the likes of Dead Space, Silent Hill, Resident Evil, and Fear. Nowadays, it seems if you want anything other than Resident Evil, you have to go with something indie like Five Nights at Freddy's or VR. I feel like after PT, all the big studios, aside from Capcom, decided that it wasn't worth it to make big, expensive horror games anymore. Uh, do you think, also, I, I would add Alien Isolation to that mm, as yeah. another big budget horror game. Uh, do you think we'll see a genre revival anytime soon? Will EA ever make another Dead Space? Will PT's promise of a new Silent Hill ever manifest? Will they ever make a fear game that is not a letdown in one way or another? No. I mean, you've got games like, you know, Prey has horror elements, uh, Evil Within 2. Yeah, okay. Like, I mean, he says excluding Resident Evil 7, that's a, or that's excluding a, Resident Evil, that's yeah. a huge one. And it exclude. is a huge one, but if you play it, there's not, yeah, I mean, there's nothing else quite and in that like, category. I, I think, I think we feel like calling fear a horror game yeah, is that's kind of a stretch. Sort of not that it, it, it certainly has the elements of horror it's in it, of, but yeah. not yeah, always played to the it. effect of creating a horror video game, yeah. I guess. Also, you're it kind of, hairs, I mean, you're kind that, of an unstoppable killing machine in fear, yeah. so it's not really like, you, you don't get the feeling of vulnerability you do. It's in like you're case. shooting your way what through a haunted house. A right. spooky yeah. girl comes up and yeah, I'm scared. I don't care if I got a gun. It's not going to work on her. I'm just thinking of like a haunted house I that you ghosts. get to go in mm-hmm. with some sort of gun, like a super, let's call it a super soaker for now until we get R&D working on, Great. on a okay. real thing. Yeah. And you get to shoot the monsters and they stop, they have to stop scaring you if you shoot them. Yeah. That sounds like it'd be a fun experience what for if, everyone except the monsters. What if you went in a haunted house and you had a vacuum cleaner mm-hmm. and you could like suck the ghosts up with the vacuum cleaner Whoa. Okay. to I only have stop them from scaring you? One question. Okay. How do you get the ghosts? How do you get the ghosts? Yeah. It's, yeah. Maybe you have like a flashlight that you could use to like stun them. No, I mean like, how are we going to fill up this house with ghosts? Oh, we'll kill a bunch of people in there. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. I, have, I have no further questions. Okay, great. Here's three hundred million dollars. Terrific. Whoa. Uh, He's gonna have to kill a lot of people. Okay. Doesn't, it doesn't cost not, nearly that much ch- money. Well, so. I mean, the, the killing them is easy, but then making them disappear is hard. You have to make sure they have regrets, so they come back as ghosts. Yeah. Right. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll, uh, that's the easy part. <laughs> uh, let's see, Darian from Toronto. Make them all eat their dogs. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Uh, I'd been looking forward to the new Unreal Tournament, enjoyed the pre-alpha builds I'd played, and was left disappointed that it's seemingly been abandoned. I also have zero interest in playing Fortnite, but it's obviously impossible to deny deny its incredible popularity. Uh, My question is, do you think Epic will uh, be able to direct its newfound audience to any other very different games they eventually release, 
Or are most Fortnite players only Fortnite players? For example, say they miraculously do resurrect UT. Do you believe that they'd be able to leverage that player base towards checking it out? On that note, will Epic ever put out another game again, or will they go the way of Riot and become the Fortnite company? You could argue right now, especially right now, I think it's a pretty easy argument to make, that any time they spend working on anything that is not Fortnite is wasting money. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure people in the management make exactly that argument. Yeah. Uh, but that that'll, but that won't always be the case. Yeah. Uh, but right now, yeah. But right now, yeah. They Why should, would they, they not? Should, they should probably keep working put, on Fortnite. Yeah. Make some more skins and dances, I guess. What 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 new thing can we do to announce the new skins and dances? What can we tear a hole in the sky and skins fell out? Ride it on the moon. Yeah, there you go. New skins in store. Free V Bucks. Click here. <laughs> I guess. I mean, the question is, can they put all the people they have to use working on Fortnite? Like, is there actually that Probably. much to do on Fortnite at any given time? Well, you know, they, there's also like their engine licensing business yeah, and all that other yeah. stuff. Obviously, there's probably sure. plenty of people that are working on that end of things. Yeah, I mean, uh, in terms of like actual game, actual game development, development content creation type. Uh, I think if they wanted to, okay, I think Unreal Tournament it would be a really bad uh, example to use yeah. for this because it is a shooter like Fortnite is. But yeah. let's say, uh, what's the name of the mm -hmm. game that they announced? The J.J. Abrams thing. Oh, uh, Spy, Spy Jinx. I was going to say Spy Borgs, but that's a very different thing. Uh, Spy Jinx, right? So let's say when Spy Jinx come out, comes out and they're like, man, we really would like people to play Spy Jinx. If you buy Spy Jinx, you get a Fortnite skin. There you go. Done. Yeah. You're fucking head of the marketing class. Congratulations. It's the I mean, Corner that's, office. That's the ben. Blizzard approach right now yeah. for like uh, HOTS, right? It's oh, like, yeah. oh, come play three they've, rounds of HOTS and yeah. you get an Overwatch skin. They've, or, they've been doing that very effectively for a long time. It's just like, like, here's some Spy Jinx skins for Fortnite if you buy slash play Spy Jinx. Yeah. You know, it was. I assume maybe. it's still this way for a long time. Like any Blizzard game you bought, especially like the Deluxe Edition, would get you stuff for every other game they currently like. You oh, get yeah. you get a Diablo three pet yeah. or a, a wings or something. Right. You get a, a WoW pet. You get StarCraft avatars. Like you get everything. Uh, so I figure that's that's the way they go when it comes time to launch another game is to just have like a substantial Fortnite tie in. Yeah. Uh, that you know, like not to say that like they're going to launch a thing that's going to suddenly usurp Fortnite's popularity, but it'll help them get that thing off to a start uh, that it wouldn't get on its own. They do seem to push a lot of events and stuff in that game. Yep. Like I see yeah. all the stuff about like the dome cracking or whatever yeah, is like, going on like right very, now. Like they just seem aggressive. pretty yeah. pretty active about like pushing things forward. And they're they're really responsive in like the the subreddit for the game. Like they're in there like commenting on people's like, hey, I have an idea. You should do this in the game. And there'll be a dev who pops in. And it's like that's a really good idea. And we hmm. like we're doing this thing and blah blah. blah. We stole it from you. Well, yeah. I mean, honestly, but like that. Those are people who are submitting ideas because they want to see their game get yeah. better. Right. And the fact that they don't have to do this. They don't have to like be involved in the community. They don't have to, you know, mm -hmm. take they don't even have to change the game really. I wonder about the legality of that. Because you know, you, so many studios like don't take any pitches for any ideas ever because of the legality involved. And maybe that's because that's coming in submitted as a pitch. Yeah. Whereas this is just someone posting an idea publicly. Maybe it's a lot easier for them to go like, sure, we'll do that. You posted it publicly, so who owns it? Nobody. Maybe it's there's like an imager clause that's like... Oh, right, yeah. Once you post it to Reddit, Reddit technically owns it anyway. I wonder. Eh. All right. They're rewriting the book on like rapid development and, yeah. and rapid, like, like being able to kind of change directions and, and turn on a dime. Like it that's that's it's impressive even if you don't like the game it's impressive how yeah. much shit they are doing with that like that that i think you know like uh, you know fortnite will go on for probably years to come i'm sure but like the the true effects of it we still don't know but one of them is probably like that yeah. is that kind of rapid response effort uh which i think you can only really do with a multiplayer game you know because story is much harder to change and, and all that other stuff after the fact. All right, last email. Peter in Romania. Uh, having recently lost uh, quite a fair bit of weight, I found myself being able to fit once more into a Sonic the Hedgehog hoodie I had purchased a few years ago. Yeah. Order some pizzas, man. My question is this. Should I or should I not wear said hoodie to a first date? Pros, it's a good fit. A somewhat subdued design. Good. Cons. Sonic the Hedgehog. I'd okay. Really have I to see it. As a Sonic fan, yeah. 
as the only Sonic fan in the room, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that? Or I mean, it, it could either... As somebody who doesn't care Son- about Sonic at all, do that. It could seal the deal or just you know weed her out. You know, That's she, If she's not down with that Sonic hoodie, are you guys really going to last? I, I do have access to a photo. Give me a second. Okay. Mine's less about that, but more of like... If you do wear that on the first date and she comments on it and likes it, that's just like... You're in there. You're done. You're married at that point. You're legally married. Yep. Pretty much. Pretty much. I don't know if I've told the story before, but the first date that I had with my now ex-wife, actually, we were, we were down in her parents' basement, uh, and she... Hell she, of a date. <laughs> she asked. It was great, actually. Yeah, like, sounds like... Uh, she asked if I was into MST3K, and I unbuttoned my... Shirt a little oh bit, God. pulled it open to reveal an MST3K. Did you know she liked it? No, no, I was just wearing wow. it underneath. That's incredible, I actually. Was in there, and you got married. Yeah, we got married. Actually, taking another look at this photo, it's like old school '90s Sonic. That is not a subdued design. That's a big. That's Sonic. a logo for Sonic that's, the Hedgehog. That's a large Sonic, Sonic head. He's yeah, that's and he's Sonic angry. Is I like the clouds. He's I determined. Like I like how angry he looks. I like this shirt. You should wear that more often. Generally, don't wear yeah, that. I feel like it, he he just looks determined to go fast. I take me. it back. Don't wear this on the first date. Yeah, you might give her the wrong message. What if you're trying to put out that you want to take this oh. relationship faster and everything? Yeah. And she just wants to take it uh, slow. Take it, take it slow. She wants to take, she wants to take it knuckles. Gross. Hang on, what? what? Gross? That's a different hoodie. What are you Gross. talking about? We'll talk later. Hand check, hand check. <laughs> <laughs> trying, to, <laughs> trying to give the impression that you're into human hedgehog relations. Well, who isn't just like what? Sonic is? Yeah. I don't know. I just I want to see. kiss a girl like Sonic. Fair enough. When I envisioned you, when you said Sonic the Hedgehog hoodie, I was envisioning a Sonic blue hoodie that had spikes on the hood. Oh, yeah. They Same. must make that, right? They, oh, they yeah. have to exist. Oh, 100%. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought when I saw yeah. the subject line of the email. It was just like, Sonic's head on your head with the spikes or whatever. Uh, uh, Kigurumi? Anyone? Yes. Yes. Nope. Thank you. Oh, hell yeah. Can't help you. Uh, I had a pug, Kigurumi. It's pretty cool. I don't know. This looks retro enough that you could maybe pass it off as some kind of intentional kitsch. Don't do it. I think. No. If, okay, if you have like... But maybe play it safe. If the rest of your outfit is really fucking cool... Like if you have some sort of cool hat, yeah, and or <laughs> sunglasses, yeah, like, I don't fedora know. maybe, or like yeah, a cool nice. coat, yeah. or like, like, like a nice coat fedora. over Wait, it, a coat over the hoodie. It's I don't covering know, up like a trench coat, coat over it. Okay, <laughs> so right. it's gonna it's gonna take an extreme amount of confidence to make this work. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like if you can make it part of this really kick ass, like retro cool. Like something really cool, like a Ready Player One vibe. Uh-huh. Yeah, something really cool, <laughs> like a Ready Player One vibe. <laughs> I think the uh, the key to this is be yourself. If that's you, just be you. Because would you really want to be with Ma- someone who doesn't want to be with actual genuine Jeff, I know you? you've been out of the dating game for a little bit now, but never be you. That's the first rule. <laughs> no, Never be yourself. It, yeah, okay, well, that depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a lasting, genuine thing, no, I mean, I'm going to maintain. Be you. That's true. You let you let the you come out over the course of no. several years. No, if you're just on some like preferably after mission, they're locked into some exactly. kind of binding agreement. Yeah, Once down, they move in with you, yeah. <laughs> no, don't do don't. Then do that you to start any, when you do that to someone else. You're really just doing it to yourself. <laughs> no one wants that. Just right. Don't keep up the facade for who? For who are you doing it for? Why would you do it? Uh, unless you're just like on some casual situation, tindering it up or whatever, then I I don't know, I don't know. Just make that. Wear your Sonic the Hedgehog. I take a, a picture of it, put it on yes, Tinder. I was gonna say, and make that, see what comes your way. Make that make that your Tinder photo. I yeah. had a nightmare two nights ago that uh, my partner had broken up, and I had I had to make a Tinder for whatever reason. And it's you know, the law. you're supposed to have like a bio, right? Mm. That's like your selling point or whatever. And I couldn't come up with one, and I got an, a letter from the government <laughs> saying that they were going to throw me in jail mm-hmm. if I didn't come up with a good Tinder bio and yep. get at least five matches in the first day. Yeah. And so it became this like pressure of what do I put? Um, un- unfortunately, I woke up before I like came up with a solid like the one. Perfect. But yeah. I, I spent a lot of time. There's a picture like, of you dressed up like a firefighter <laughs> next to a Dalmatian. That's it. Okay. Done. Yeah, yeah. That's problem solved. I mean, that sells itself. Yeah. No, no, no pithy tagline. Required. I love to travel. 
I'm a world warrior. <laughs> <sighs> Bombcast at Congrats on losing the weight. Yeah. Yeah. Good on you. Now Use lose the hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. Do yourself a favor. Burn it. No, I mean, keep it and wear it sometimes, it, just not to a date. It, yeah. I have an Invader Zim hoodie, and I wouldn't do the same thing. I wouldn't wear it out on the first hey, date. Hey, Jan, I'm going to need you to bring in that Invader Zim hoodie. No, I think I, I, I'm going to throw it away as soon as I go home today. What? Well, that's a classic piece of... You bring your stuffed gear, though? Oh, yeah, okay. of course. That, that, yeah, that's that'll, how you know they're real. That always plays. Uh, yeah, send in emails. <laughs> Maybe we'll read them. Send us pictures Thanks. of your hoodies. Yes. <laughs> rate rate, rate yourhoodie.com. Yeah, we want to Yeah, we, send us in pictures of you wearing your Sonic the Hedgehog hoodie. Or any hoodie, really. You know, no, we're not, we're not picky. Hoodie. Hoodie. We are picky. <laughs> and in video game themed hoodies. Yeah. Hmm. Or remember, it's change your Tinder photo to you wearing your Sonic the Hedgehog hoodie week. Ooh. So <laughs> yeah. uh, send in pictures of your Tinder profile. Hang on. Now I want to see what other Sonic the... Oh, wow. Huh. Oh, yeah, there's the full on... Adult Deluxe Sonic costume. Yep. Shut this down. Ooh. Jan, take Final us Final J's take daughter is furious about the quality of this Sonic the Hedgehog costume. Now we're talking. Hand check. Okay. Yes. Put Sonic the Hedgehog regalia <laughs> on your tender. Let us know how it goes. I guess. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for listening. After show coming after up. After show. After show. It's after the show. Yep. We yep. do a show after the show. Truth and advertising. It's on... If, you, if you're not going to watch it live, it's on the internet under the name Giant Bombcast Aftermath. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Search for that on a podcast service. It's probably there. Yeah. Or on our website. Yeah. Or it's on our website, there. which under, is giantbomb.com. Under podcasts. We have a premium service that you can sign up for to get more. Don't go to Zaxxon. It's not there. No. It should be, though. But apparently it's now at McDonald's.lol. <laughs> yep. All so, right. I want to thank whoever registered that for taking it off the list and, and solving a problem that I've had yep. <laughs> of almost registering it so many times and being so back and forth about registering another domain I don't need. Whoa. Uh, yeah, that got handled. Oh, it doesn't redirect to us? Okay. Uh, it's a creepy-ass picture. Yes, if you, click, if you click that full-screen awful oh, okay. picture, it does. Okay, well, who knows? All maybe, right. Uh, maybe by the time... That, please put the text of the Hamburglar is a war criminal over that. Thank you. All right. On that note, thanks for listening. We'll be back with more stuff later in the week. What if it said the Hamburglar is a war criminal and war crimes are delicious? Then I'd probably go to McDonald's.lol more often. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks. See you next week.